Louisiana, the City of Lights, and Turpin Stadium, where Northwestern State finally gets its first home date as they take on an old rival, Stephen F. Austin, the Lumberjacks, coming to Natchitoches from Nacogdoches. We welcome you inside the broadcast booth. He's a two-time Super Bowl champion and a college football Hall of Famer. I was the defensive coordinator on an intramural flag football team. We did not have Gary Reasons anywhere on that squad. Uh, Gary, a lot of fun here in the home opener and an old rival, Northwestern State and Stephen F. Austin. Yeah, the Lumberjacks and the Demons. It's been a long time that these teams have played together. It's been a few years since they have gotten together, but good to get back again this rivalry once again. Patrick, it should be a good one. These two teams are both headed, I think, into good, good levels of conference play. We start with Stephen F. Austin. We talk about the quarterbacks. We start with Brian Maurer, a guy who is, uh, again, very multi-talented, coming from Tennessee, played at Tennessee, but struggling with interceptions last week. Oh, well, he's a big guy, and he could run very, very well. He, he ran the ball 63 yards in one rush last week, over 100 yards last week as well. He's a leader of that football team. He can play. They can win with him. And I think for Northwestern State, Tyler Vanderwall, their quarterback this year, who's a transfer in, he's got to improve this week. They, he needs to make a big improvement from week two to week three. That'll be good for the Demons. He needs to throw the football accurately. He can get that done. This should be a good contest tonight. Well, it is going to be interesting to watch how the quarterbacks interact with their respective teams. And, Gary, you know... As a guy who's on the opposite side, anytime you can get some turnovers out of the quarterback, the opposing quarterback, that really gets your team going. Well, it helps the football team in many different ways. You know, defensively, it can, it can build the morale for the defensive side of the ball, but really overall for a football team, any type of a stop or a turnover really is an improvement for the overall chances to win the football game, get your offense back there, out there on the field. You know, these are, you know, two coaching staffs, I think, that are kind of looking at each other and saying, hey, what do our teams look like this year Two of them now, both of them have had a couple of ball games played this year, Northwestern State looking for their first win while Stephen F. Austin looks and looking for their second victory on the season. I think this game, Patrick, is critical for them as they start to look into conference play, and we'll talk more about that ahead. James Brookhart, our head referee, ready for the coin toss, and we'll throw it down on the field to him. Washington, D.C., Dr. Hills from Hatesville, Kentucky. Joining him this year on the Demons is his son, Dr. Jonathan Aiken, NSU professor of biology. Well, it doesn't appear that James Brookhart's got the microphone on, but we can interpret. Oh, now he's turning the microphone on. Northwestern State has won the toss and deferred their option to the second half. Stephen F. Austin will receive. Gentlemen, shake hands. Good luck to you tonight. So there you go. Northwestern State will go on defense to start things off. And, Gary, this is a couple of teams that really kind of are old school in a lot of ways. They both want to run the football. They both want to be a little bit smash mouth, even if it's not out of traditional formations necessarily. Yeah, both teams want to take the pressure off of the offense, take it off the quarterback, be able to move the football down the field kind of methodically. And, you know, for Northwestern State, it's it's been, you know, not, not as – smooth as they would have liked to have been. Uh, they haven't had the running game that they need to develop here to get into conference play to move move forward, they think, to be in a better position, you know, for conference play. And Stephen F. Austin, you know, they are moving into the United Athletic Conference, which is a new conference this season, you know, pulling in a couple of different, different leagues. And it's interesting to see how they're going to unfold there being after their winning season last year, winning the WAC. Time to turn it to the third member of our broadcast crew, Tyler Moody down on the field, who's got our Moody's matchup for today. Moody. Yeah, I'm looking at a key matchup here, and it is that SFA rushing attack against this Northwestern State run defense. Last week, Jarrell Wembley, 123 yards on 18 carries. He scored three times in that contest, including a 64-yard touchdown to cap off the win against Alcorn State. Anthony Williams has 100 yards and a score on the season as well. But here's the thing for Northwestern State. They gave up 440-plus rushing touchdowns last week. This is a team that's been plagued by the big run on defense. But they're anchored in the middle by Jared Peraza. And then also beside him, Kendall Harmon had a big game last week. Seven total tackles in that contest. Can Peraza and Harmon in this Northwestern State defense deal with this two-headed rushing attack of SFA? That is my key to this game. Not to mention Brian Maurer, yeah. also a very capable runner as well, as Gary mentioned in the open. So we are set to go from here in Natchitoches, the home opener. 
for Northwestern State and one of its old rivals, the Stephen F. Austin Lumberjacks. This is normally played for the largest rivalry trophy in sports. We'll tell you more about uh, the status of that as the game progresses. So the kickoff by Brett Money is away, and that will be a touchback, and SFA will start things off on the 25-yard line. So, Gary, what do you look for here early both ways? Well, I think that for Stephen F. Austin coming out here, you're on the road. You want to put things in perspective, and, you know, they don't want to get any negative plays offensively. They, they told us on the, on the call with, with the coaching staff that essentially they want to continue to have um, – positive yardage and their offensive line will talk about them. I think they're going to set them up for success. They're big, they're strong, they're experienced all across the front of this offensive line. Every member of the starting five on the offensive line is at least 300 pounds and three of the five of them are 320 or better. Right up the middle to start things off, right into a pile, a gain of about a yard. So no surprise, we see the running attack to start things off and Wembley the sophomore from Houston, Texas, last week over 120 yards and two TDs. Also had a receiving touchdown as well. A good job there by Northwestern State, plugging it up there, only about a half a yard, maybe give him a yard on that carry. So second and nine here. Bring the receiver in motion. Quick check down, tight end Keyshawn Williams. Will set up a third and long. Interestingly, Northwestern State gives up a ton of big plays defensively, but they have held their opponents to just 28% on third downs. That's 14th best in the country. Yeah, they have held pretty well in the secondary. They've covered up pretty well. It's been those explosive plays, the explosive runs that uh, Tyler talked about in his piece. That is what has plagued this Northwestern State defense. Go right up the middle, same play that NSU got gashed with against Louisiana Tech last week. And it's a foot race to the end zone. And it is won by Emmanuel Brown, preventing the touchdown right up the middle of the field by Wembley. Wow, that's exactly what happened here. It's too deep coverage, and the safeties go completely outside of the hash marks. We'll look at the, the replay here maybe in just a moment, but it is a parting C here for this running back. Watch that. There's nobody in the middle. The safeties both commit up and they run up. Good job there by Emmanuel Brown, 19, stopping that touchdown. Otherwise, it's a quick score there for the Lumberjacks. And again, being victimized by the run game up the middle, the explosives as Jared Pedraza makes the stop that time against Anthony Williams. It is a two-headed monster at running back for this SFA squad. As a matter of fact, there are no other running backs that even have a carry this year other than Wembley and Williams. Well, you got to add the quarterback in there. Brian Meyer has done a good job running the football at times, but you know what? Colby, excuse me, he does not, he does not want to ha have the quarterback running the football. So that is uh, going to be something that they're going to hold on to. Colby Carfield, the head coach for Stephen F. Austin, saying he doesn't want his quarterback to be their leading rusher. A lot of motion so far in the early going. This time, Maurer will keep, try to turn the corner. It'll be ushered out of bounds just inside the five-yard line. But that's, a smart, drive. but that's a smart play by him that time. He had the numbers. He had one-on-one -on -one blocking on the outside, and the defenders had to get off the, the blocks to make the tackle on the quarterback as he run it there. That's the right call and the decision to make right there. So a little bit of a cat and mouse game here early on here in this red zone. The red zone defense and penetrations here. This is, a, this is an offense, I believe, Patrick, that has been 100% successful in the red zone, Stephen F. Austin. They'll go third down and short, right up the middle, Maurer, and he's in for the touchdown to open things up. So the running game right up the middle, paying dividends for Stephen F. Austin coming in, averaging over 175 yards rushing a game. Well, they've averaged 34 points in the last two ball games, and they start out right here with an explosive run to get them inside the 10-yard line, and then a couple of runs later, they're in the end zone here against Northwestern State. The thing that concerns you, I'd imagine, Gary, as a former middle linebacker yourself, is it's all been run game between the guards, basically. That's exactly what it is. Inside run game, power run. It was really poor, line, uh, poor lanes coverage there by the safeties that basically split on that. They need to be able to hold on to the middle of the field on that defensive run series. Chris Campos, the junior from there in Nacogdoches, adds the extra point. And it is a quick drive right down the field by Stephen F. Austin with the run game to take the early lead. Stephen F. Austin starts with a six-play, 75-yard drive. It took 246 off the clock, aided quite a bit by the big run up the middle 
That ended up going for 58 yards by Jarrell Wembley. Then Brian Maurer, the quarterback, finishes it off with his second rushing touchdown of the season. And Stephen F. Austin out to a quick 7-0 lead. Kennard King back deep. Takes the very short kick just outside the 15-yard line. We'll try the sideline. And we'll get it up near the 30-yard line for the Northwestern State offense. Which finds itself in a hole to start with, Gary. And Tyler Vanderwall, who we talked about in the open, a kid that's very talented, only got beaten out at Wyoming because a guy named Josh Allen showed up. <laughs> I believe you might know him from the Buffalo Bills. But this is a guy that still has something to prove in this offense. Yeah, and he's somebody who can play. He's got skills. He's got talent. He's just got to put things together and uh, be consistent here. And let's see if he has a good night tonight. Tight end in motion. Going to throw the quick bubble screen. And a nice gain to Zach Patterson. NSU happy to have him back in the lineup for a gain of 12. Patterson only has three catches so far this season after 83 last year. Yeah, Coach Laird said that they needed to get him involved in this offense, get him involved early, see them throwing the ball to him on a quick little slip screen there on the first play and good yardage. Tyler Vanderwald, we were talking to offensive coordinator Bo Blair and last week he wanted to be hit early. So the Demons ran a quarterback draw, got him hit early on. Got, kind of got him into it. Now a quick completed pass. Has Tyler Vanderwall good as Colby Burrell gets the first carry and gets eight. Vanderwall going to throw the wheel route. Trayvon Jones, did he come down with it? He was out of bounds. Yeah, it looked like he had the ball, made, made the catch, obviously, but he had, didn't have control of it until he was out of really bounds. Field is we'll take passed. another look at this here on the sideline, but this is a good pass here by Vanderwall. Good target. He knows he's got one-on-one -on, -one on a wheel route on the outside, but watch control of the football. He doesn't have complete control until he's out of bounds. Did that, did that right toe come in? It may have. They may stop this and take a look at it here a little closer because that right toe might have tapped that down but they're going pretty quick here from Northwestern to get this first down actually they're gonna hold here Brad Laird telling his team to hold and now he's gonna take a timeout now that's, that's not a bad time out there that's what gives the replay official a chance to take another look at this they can still stop this play and review it especially since coach Laird called that timeout So NSU will take the time out here and see if they get a review of this. I don't know if we can see it and slow that down there at the progression of what happens there. We'll take a look at it here from the angle of the defense here going and seeing this football. This might be a better look at here. This is the outstretched arm because you have control of the football and the toe is down, the knee is down on the sideline. Does he keep control? I, he does. Yeah, I think he that's does. a catch, That, that may be a catch. That may be a catch. If the, if they can definitively say that that toe or foot was down while he had control of the football, that could be a catch. And uh, officials are going to look at this here real quickly. By the way, just want to shout out our camera operators for uh, coming up with that one. We now have an end zone cam. We didn't have that last year. So uh, good to have the end zone cam. That's the shot you just got. Yeah, there it is. We call it a slash camera from the end zone. Can get those down the field either from behind the defense or behind the offense shots. Those really are really helpful when you're going through different types of replay decisions like this one that we're looking at right now. Well, apparently the uh, the replay booth does not seem to have any. I mean, they're looking at it. Obviously, they look at every play, but they are not going to stop play and take another look at it. So Brad Laird calls the timeout. The replay booth seems to be adamant that that was not a catch. Although based on the replay we have, it certainly looked like it was close. That right toe dragging for Trayvon Jones, the tight end on the wheel route. And I think this is probably two down territory if you're thinking for Brad, Brad Laird, what your decision might be. Love to get the first down here on third down and short. Third and two. Go with a little power play around the right side, and that is going to be stopped in the backfield. Nothing doing. Jeremiah Walker, the preseason all-conference safety, coming up to make the stop. Stephen F. Austin defense going a little bit after the whistle and that thing was stopped to trying to get him to the ground. But this is going to bring up a fourth down and punting situation. Might have lost about a yard on that on that uh, run, Patrick. So it brings up a long two yards, I would guess, to uh, 
get that first down. We'll see a new punter for Northwestern State. Now, Reed Honstein, 5'11", 165, sophomore from Georgetown, Texas, by way of Blinn Junior College and Sam Houston. He is now the punter after Brett Money both kicked and punted for the first two weeks. Snap goes right over his head. And this is a disaster. Ball pops right up in the air. That could be targeting. This will be scooped and scored. It will not be a touchdown. It'll be called back. Wow. As the snap went right through the hands of Honstein. And then he was absolutely waylaid. Picked up by Ahmad Murray in return for the touchdown, but the flag thrown right where Honstein was, was contacted. Yeah, I'd like to see a replay of this, and we'll see what goes on here to determine whether or not this is going to be possibly a, a turnover. I don't think it's going to be a turnover here after it's all said and done. Receiving team. The previous play is under further review. We'll see. Yeah, we'll look at it here from the right side of your of your screen here. Take a look at it. As he picks the ball up, he's targeting. It's going to be hitting the shoulders. I think this play is going to stand. Yeah, I think that's I think a good that's, contact. And I this think, is a touchdown here for Stephen F. Austin. Yeah, to Kai Lloyd, the safety came in and looked like he was head up and hit him in the chest. Yeah, face mask on the left shoulder and arm is what is what I saw. And I think this is going to be a play that's actually going to be a good defensive hit tackle in the strip strip fumble for that goes up and return for a touchdown. A disastrous start here for the home opener for Northwestern State. Stephen F. Austin, meanwhile, the dream start as they currently lead 13 to nothing after the fumbled punt was picked up and returned for a touchdown. The penalty was called targeting. That was to Kai Lloyd, the commerce transfer. And I think the the Stephen F. Austin sideline just got word this is not going to After be. After further standing. review, there is no targeting on the play. The result of the play is a touchdown. Well, cause fumble, fumble pops up in the air, recovered by Stephen F. Austin. They run the ball back into the end zone. No targeting on the play, so that is a second score here early in this second quarter, and great way to start for the Lumberjacks. To Kai Lloyd with the hit, Ahmad Murray with the catch I guess since it was in the air it wasn't a scoop so uh, he was with, got the catch and score and an absolutely dream start for Colby Carthel and his Stephen F Austin Lumberjacks is there an extra point from starting this one 14 nothing with less than five minutes gone in the first quarter Chris Campos to add the point after and it is good. So is good. a fumble on the punt snap ends up with a touchdown for Stephen F. Austin. Takai Lloyd forced it, and Ahmad Murray scored it. So Northwestern State and Stephen F. Austin have traditionally played for the largest rivalry trophy in all of college football called Chief Caddo. This was a series that started back in 1924, excuse me, 1960 was when the series for Chief Caddo started. These two teams have played since 1924. So back in 2019, Stephen F. Austin won the Chief Caddo battle and took Chief Caddo back to Nacogdoches. After that happened, the Caddo Nation sent a letter to both universities saying basically that we understand you're trying to honor the Caddo Nation by this this trophy, but we don't consider it an honor. So the two universities got together and decided in 2021 to go ahead and eliminate the battle for Chief Caddo. So while this continues to be a uh, historic and great storied rivalry, the largest trophy in sports in college football, Chief Caddo is no longer being played for. It's actually in storage in Nacogdoches as there were some threats against Chief Caddo at one point in the last couple of years. Yeah, it's been a very interesting week. There's been a lot of, lot of noise, so to speak, around 
uh, Chief Caddo and, and what the, that means to these two universities. Obviously, Nacogdoches and Natchitoches, Louisiana have great history in the Caddo tradition. And there's a lot of uh, people on both sides of the fence on whether or not uh, this is a, something that should be continued. And I know the rivalry will be continued, but as far as having a, a trophy, so to speak, uh, and maybe Chief Caddo, it may not be that, but it certainly should look to find a, another trophy to you know play with it instead yeah both coaches and both universities seem to want to have some kind of uh, an icon or a trophy to play for but uh, chief caddo is not what they are going to do uh, they're not going to play for that anymore as yet a lineman downfield here on first down a little unique story about that is you know they actually can you know talk to the caddo tribe in the in the state receiver, of Oklahoma. Downfield, number 17 offense five yard penalty repeat first down but actually the Caddo, a Dei tribe here just east of, excuse me, just west of Natchitoches in Robilene is really the, the Caddo tribe that is here. And, you know, my, my mother-in-law and my wife are both tribal members. So it's interesting, you know, they, they've got different opinions and, you know, it's not, uh, I don't think the, we've heard the end of this here, Patrick. Zach Patterson on the end around, little pop pass. It's a couple of yards as NSU behind the sticks here, something that has been a real problem for this Northwestern State offense. They average eight penalties and over 83 yards in penalties per game. And it seems like it happens offensively mostly and at the most inopportune times. Yeah, it puts you behind the sticks here and that's exactly what's happened here. Seven, second and long, second and 14, not very good situation to be in. Vanderwall now under pressure, ball comes free and SFA has it. Back to back turnovers committed by Stephen F. Austin and the Lumberjacks have it inside the 15-yard line. Wow, Tyler Vanderwall is just backing up here, and you see the pressure from the inside here. Just a right hand there, pulls that football down. Jermaine Brown with the strip. And then Brandon Lane comes away with it. And so SFA, which just had a fumbled punt return for a touchdown, now we'll have it first and 10 at inside the 15-yard line. Yeah, good low look at it here. Watch number zero right there in the middle of your screen. He gets his hand right on Vanderwall's hand and pulls that ball down. Clear recovered fumble there for Stephen F. Austin, and they're set up very great field position here on the 14-yard line. Lumberjacks will go with the pistol formation behind Brian Maurer, the junior from Ocala, Florida. Did start and play a few games for Tennessee back early in his career. Goes with a handoff up the middle, tackles broken, good strong run. Inside the 10, that's again Jarrell Wembley. Wembley, sixth in America with three rushing touchdowns on the season through two games. He also has a reception for a touchdown as well. He's been a little bit of a workhorse there. there a couple of running backs as we talked about, Patrick, in this running, running offense here for Stephen F. Austin. The Northwestern State here along this goal line, they've been playing man-to-man -man coverage and trying to bring these safeties down to stop this run game. Mauer's going to throw to the corner. Perfect ball, touchdown. Found Kylan Harris, the sophomore from Laplace. Perfect corner route. And SFA is absolutely hammering Northwestern State here in the early going. Shock and awe from the Lumberjacks. What a great route that time. Inside move, a little bit of a post route commit then goes out to the corner of the end zone and well, well thrown there by Brian Maher to get that touchdown for Stephen F. Austin. So SFA with a long touchdown drive. Demons move the ball out to nearly midfield. Punt goes through the hands of the first time punter. Recovered for a touchdown by SFA. Then the Demons fumble on their next possession. It's funny, Colby Carthel was talking about the win last week against Alcorn State, saying not often you win with a minus three turnover margin. His team's already plus two, and we are not even seven minutes into this game. And plus 21 points in the ball game here. Everything is going the way of the Lumberjacks here. It's a great way to start on the road. So NSU will have to find a way to regroup here before the home fans, the home opener for Northwestern State here in Natchitoches. Demons have been good in home openers here, 31 and 14 since Turpin Stadium was uh, renamed in 1977. By the way, the year I was born. <laughs> well, both these teams, you know, Northwestern State playing in the Southland Conference. 
Stephen F. Austin won the WAC Conference a year ago. They now have since joined the United Athletic Conference, which is a big conference now. They've got a lot of teams in there. So there's, there's 15 conferences across the country, 13 leagues, and that is, that is a joint conference, and a, they call, we call it a league, United Athletic Conference. And uh, definitely in the mix here as far as one of the superior conferences across at the FCS football landscape. So Chris Campos has had a couple of short kicks and another one, Kennard King, fields just inside the 10-yard line. King runs into his own blockers before he stood up just shy of the 30-yard line. Demons have had good field position. First drive, moved it out a little bit, then had the fumbled punt that was picked up and returned for a touchdown, or really snatched out of the air and returned for a touchdown. A little bit of shell shock, I think, here for Northwestern State. You got to just kind of wipe this away, start like it's 0 0, get back out there, and just got to win the next play. That's what you can only you can only do that is win that next play and keep going. And you've got to stop self, uh, self having those self inflicted wounds, which Northwestern State seems to have done here. Tyler Vanderwall in the pistol gives to the transfer running back. That's Darius Boone who picks up first down yardage. And a first down as well. Yeah, you see. Get that out there. A couple of couple of plays here, and they move the sticks. Boone, the junior transfer from Tulsa, Oklahoma, by way of Eastern Michigan. A little bit more of a power back. Stephen F. Austin takes the timeout. So Gary, you put you in the shoes of Brad Laird, and. What, how do you kind of get your team sort of focused back in after a 21 to nothing start? Well, you'd have to go back to, to get the next play. Just win the next play, do your assignment, get your assignment football, so to speak, done, and then put one after the other as they do here. Get a first down, move the ball. They're, cap they're a capable football team. Northwestern State is a capable football team with the players that they have and the talent that they have. They just need to execute and you know, the things that are happening, you know, against the defense, explosive plays, they have shown up again here against this defense. And the, for the unfortunate situation here with a ball through the hands of the punter that clearly set uh, set this this team back. And, and then you get a forced fumble by the defense. Stephen F. Austin doing, doing their part in, in helping this along. And quickly, 21 to nothing, you just got to you know, come out and start keep swinging coming in the defense for SFA very adept at forcing fumbles they were fifth in the country already with three fumble recoveries on the season give them a couple more here in the first quarter so first and ten for the demons as they try to just get their legs under them after an explosive start by the lumberjacks and that's going to be a backwards play terrific pursuit that time to Kai Lloyd coming up to make the stop yeah, good job there by Lloyd coming up and nowhere to run after that quick catch. Actually you losing just a little bit of yardage there on that play. Actually, excuse me, that was the safety Dylan Tooker. Yeah, that was Tooker as and, well. Uh, nine and eight look exactly alike from up here. A little tough there. These numbers do squeeze together. So we've got movement all along both lines pointing both ways. Looked like SFA jumped and so the offsides penalty against SFA. This Lumberjack team really good in penalties. They only average, they average less than four penalties a game for 32 yards a game. They are top 10 in both of those categories. So very disciplined squad under Colby Carthel in his fifth season. Quick throw to the outside. Stanley King is there. Well, good play design that time. Run your outside receiver down the field, split the two defenders, and don't let either one of them commit. Then have Stanley just run a little bit of an out route there and connected by a Vanderwall. Demons trying to move quickly here. That is their preferred tempo. Vanderwall didn't like what he had outside, so just dives forward for what he can. And there's only two receivers out in that route that time. This was either going to be an inside run play, and I think that uh, Tyler just decided not to throw the ball out there in coverage and just t try to take what he could get, and didn't work to his advantage very well. Ended up getting a yard. He'll stay in the pistol, go with the outside stretch play. 
Boone cut, cuts it back up. And now a third and three for NSU upcoming. The Demons offensively convert just 22% of their third downs. We thought that Darius Boone would start this ball game, but Kobe Burrell became available and he got that quick start. Dummy and then look back at the sideline. NSU offensive coordinator Bo Blair up in the booth next to us. And this defense for Stephen F. Austin is a hybrid 3 4 defense. Going to look for the corner route to Trayvon Jones, the demon tight end, and he pulls it in. First yep. and goal. Yeah, very well designed play that time by Jones. He being able to get him up on that look at going to, to going to he's going to the middle and he takes it to the outside and the linebacker not able to keep up with him. He gets behind him. So he was on Luke Watson, their middle linebacker, and that's not that's not a matchup that they want. Gonna throw the fade to the back of the end zone looking for Stanley King. Well covered up. Probably a pretty good decision that time by Tyler Vanderwall to throw that ball out and deep out of the end zone. Both of those receivers in that area were well covered. So second and goal for the Demons, who are trying to get themselves settled into this matchup after a quick 21-0 start, including two turnovers in the first three possessions by the homestanding Demons. Pressure comes. Vanderwall going to try to run for it. Hit throws it late, and that one is almost intercepted. Is it intercepted? It is actually stayed on the back of one of the players down on the ground and was picked off by Stephen F. Austin. Yeah, that's Marge Smith, I think, who comes up with that. Watch number 18 on the right side of your screen. Come up there and get that football. He bounces it off the hands and off the back. He picked it up off the back. I believe that's the quarterback running there. Marge Smith makes a huge play there for Stephen F. Austin. So the ball never hit the ground. And because of that, it ends up being an interception right on the back of everyone in Time the pile. On the field. Now see the ball goes out there. He pops and it comes back and it go, bounces right off the back of Tyler Vanderwall. And Marge Smith comes and grabs it. Gets an interception again here for Stephen F. Austin. So Marge Smith will come up with the pick. And everything going wrong for Northwestern State. Everything going right for the Stephen F. Austin Lumberjacks who lead 21-0. Three turnovers in the first quarter for Northwestern State. Stephen F. Austin already leading 21 to nothing. And the ill-advised interception by Tyler Vanderwall gives the Lumberjacks the ball deep in their own territory, but in firm control of this game. Demons get a tackle for loss there. Now, yeah, poor opportunity of taking advantage of a situation by Northwestern State offensively. Turnover, this is a turnover that you wanted to not have happen. Definitely down in the red area there as you're about to put points on the board. But uh, credit to Stephen F. Austin defensively coming up with a big play. Go play action, quick throw to the outside. That one is caught. Sure tackle made on the far sideline by Anthony Richard on Ty Love, the junior from Yoakum, Texas. Now SFA, who converts nearly 43% of their third downs. We'll be looking at a third and long here. Mauer straight drop, short crosser. That one nearly picked off. Richard, the sophomore transfer from Lafayette by way of Harding the Bison up in Searcy, Arkansas. Demons get a stop and will send Hogan Wasson out to return a punt. Now that's a good job defensively. Didn't allow any explosive plays there and nothing really big happening for Stephen F. Austin and the defense doesn't yield here. So the Northwestern State gonna get another opportunity here with just a few minutes left to go in his first quarter. We'll throw it down to Tyler Moody here in just a moment. I'm curious kind of the, the temperament of the sideline Moody after such a shell shocking first quarter so far. Uh, kind of what is the emotion like down there? Well, we've seen multiple.
veteran players, the senior players trying to rally the guys, Patrick. It's, it was very somber for a bit, but they've kind of picked their heads back up trying to get back into this game. Obviously, a good stop uh, could revive those spirits, but no doubt, uh, right off the bat, things were a bit somber down here. Short punt from Max Quick, the senior from Lufkin, Texas. And NSU will have the ball inside SFA territory. Well, good field position to start this drive here. Let's take, take something good and turn it into points. That's what Brad Laird is probably pushing to his offense here, telling him, hey, take advantage of this. We were just down there and had an unfor you know, unfortunate turnover, but put points on the board here with this thing. The defense is doing its job finally, slowing down this offense. 36-yard punt by Max Quick. And we will see Quaterius Hawkins for the first time in at quarterback for Northwestern State. Hawkins will keep around the left side and get a couple. Hawkins, the senior transfer from Bastrop, Louisiana, by way of Grambling. And you take a look at the skill sets here between Tyler Vanderwall and Quaterius Hawkins. And Q's got a little bit more of a faster foot. You'll see that here. Not, not too hard to, to miss that he has an ability to run that football. Run the little play to the outside. Scooter Adams goes for a yard. And it will bring up third and long for NSU. Excuse me, that was Kenneth Lacey on the carry. And Coach Lair told us, he said, that Q can run the entire offense here, but he definitely has a skill set that uh, takes it to a different level here when you especially add in that running factor. Hawkins, smaller than Vanderwall, 5'11", 180. Dummy call, and everyone checks the sideline. Game has settled in a bit here, but SFA with the torrid start showing that bare front. Hawkins drops, going to throw the wheel route to the outside, and that is incomplete. Wow, what a nice touch pass that time. That was a well-thrown football by Hawkins to get that ball outside and allow his receiver, the only one to potentially catch that football. I'm not sure the receiver saw the ball or was able to adjust on it, but Guterres watched that ball go out there and Right in his hands, probably should have made that, that catch. Ball go, getting through Zach Patterson's hands. To Kai Lloyd on the coverage of Zach Patterson. And so we will see Honstein again to punt this one away. Reed Honstein, first snap went right through his hands. Popped up in the air and was returned for a touchdown. This one he catches and gets it away. High hanger. No fair catch called for, and still on his feet around the right side, just bumps off of a tackle and takes it all the way out across the 25-yard line. Well, it looks like he might have been tackled that time, but I don't know that he was. His, he touched the ground. Kylan Harris does a, a job of trying to tackle him. Watch on the on the end here. Harris comes around, makes the tackle. Does his knee touch the ground? Anything? Elbow? Didn't, didn't look like it. That was pretty clean. We would slow that down. That's what we'd have to do to kind of see if there's any body part touching the ground here. But at first glimpse, it, it probably did not. Again, like having that hold low hold angle. It. And I think we may have a, they're going to hold for a quick review here, I think. Yeah, he wants to look at the, the replay official in the booth up here, probably wants to look at that, that flip. And if we can slow this down just a little bit at the contact, there's Previous the play. There, yeah, that's a calf going down on the, the ground. Down. This is going to be called back here. Yeah, anything other than the, the foot. Yeah, that's right there. There you go, right that's there it. underneath. That is exactly it. Great camera work by our crew. That's that end zone camera that we talked about uh, a little while ago. Giving us a great shot. So it looks like that will move the line of scrimmage back about 20 yards or so. And Northwestern State. We'll be back on defense against Stephen F. Austin. This is an SFA team under fifth-year head coach Colby Carthel. Carthel has had a ton of success everywhere he has been. Carthel now in his fifth year. See if we can uh, see him in there. That's him pointing right in the middle of that huddle. One game over 500 in his SFA career, but Gary has a national championship in his pocket when he was the head coach at Texas A&M Commerce when they were still Division II back in 2017, won a national title. Then they moved up into the Southland Conference. Yeah, he's an experienced football coach, done a great job. He's had a great legacy of coaching in his family. His dad, Don Carthel, you know, legendary coach of a couple of universities, first at Eastern New Mexico University and also at West Texas A&M. And 
he had a long upbringing in football. So Colby Carthel has had a, a, a great mentor, and his mentor is actually here in this in the in the stadium in the press box. He's on the headset with yeah. Colby. He's in a he's in a I guess a quasi assistant here for the <laughs> for the special teams defense. Exactly. We're going to talk a lot about the family around uh, Colby Carthel coming up here in just a bit. However, on the opposite side for After Northwestern review, State, the runner was down at the 14 yard line. First down, Stephen F. Austin. So there you go. We uh, we got it right. The runner was down. So Colby Carthel and on the opposite side for Northwestern State, Brad Laird in his sixth year at the helm of the Demons. Brad Laird, 16 and 37 overall. There you see him in his sixth season. Brad Laird has just one non-conference victory in yeah. his head coaching tenure. Also want to credit Jordan Jackson on that tackle on that punt coverage, the defensive player. I was talking about the wide receiver when I made the call. Sorry about that. Pistol formation, another handoff up the middle. This time nothing doing there. That was Justice Galloway Velazquez, who's wearing three today instead of two. The transfer from Campbell University, where his defensive coordinator Weston Glosser was. Two years ago, one of the things that Northwestern State is excited about this season is the fact that they have their coordinators back for a second season. Yeah, and that really helps get the continuity of the players and the coaching staff all together on the same page. And having both coordinators there consistently is, is really big for these foot for the football team. Mauer, the deep crosser, wide open first down yardage out to the 30 yard line. Terrific work on the crossing pattern and Lawton Reichel, the former high school quarterback who has turned into arguably the go to receiver yeah. on this squad. Yeah, he's their leading receiver. Nine receptions coming into this ball game here and does a great job there on the crossing route, making himself available, running away from the defender and getting that first down. There's the other Campbell transfer, Peyton Woolard, the free safety who was in the trail position. So Brian Maurer. Good start for him, four for five for 34 yards. Also has a rushing touchdown. He'll keep, and this time he'll go down in the backfield. That's the transfer defensive end, Travion Sneed, out of Mineola by way of SMU coming away with the tackle for loss. And he's getting that start this week in there in this defensive front here for the Northwestern State and showing his presence there. Sneed so far this year, one tackle for loss and seven tackles as well on the season. And so now second and long for SFA. Staying in that pistol formation. Quick bubble screen. And a big hit on the outside on Kion Wafer. Well, this is just a call by the quarterback here of deciding, you know, where, what they're going to move with the football. The defense is, is committing Three on two here to on this near sideline. It's an easy underneath route to throw that football. So it's just the quarterback going up the line of scrimmage. Brian Mars is doing a good job of reading the defense and, and then choosing to throw it. It's man-to-man -man coverage across the board here as we look at Northwestern State defensively. Pistol formation yet again. Justice Callaway Velasquez, you see him pointing right there in the middle of the line, wanted a false start against the left guard, Keegan Holm. Demon showing a gap pressure and bring it well picked up fade to the outside. That one is incomplete. Was it picked off? It might be intercepted that ball or he's calling him out of bounds with control. He does come down with the football Patrick, but I'm sure he may be really on the these field. out of bounds. We'll see if they get a replay to look at this. But first of all, it's through the hands of the SFA receiver. Yeah, that was wafer against Emmanuel Brown. The sophomore transfer from Georgia Military College. Yeah, yeah, he, was he out catches of bounds. it out of bounds. The yep. ball may have even bounced off the turf. Side judge was uh, right on top of that. So credit Thomas Mays, the side judge for the good call there. This is fourth down here, bringing up a punting situation here for Northwestern State defensively. Max Quick had a 36-yard punt in his first effort. This one much better, an absolute missile. Hogan Wasson back, runs into his own guy. And finally goes down inside the 15-yard line. They'll actually give him the 16 and then some late pushing and shoving. 
This is a rivalry now. Don't, you know, even though SFA hasn't been in the Southland Conference in a number of years, and Northwestern State, there's no Chief Caddo on any of that. This is still a rivalry. Well, I remember playing back in these uh, these games when I played here back in the early 1980s. You know, it was a big rivalry to play every single year. Stephen F. Austin, very, very similar programs, size, and growth of these universities, sem very similar. Quaterius Hawkins stays in, hands off to Colby Burrell, who will get a yard or two before he goes down at the 17-yard line, and that should be the last play of the first quarter. And what a first quarter it was for the Stephen F. Austin Lumberjacks, a long march down the field. Well, Demons may snap it one more time before the quarter break. And they will, but get it off with two. Hawkins with a little roll, and a set and throw deep. Underthrown and incomplete. Was looking down the field for Jaron Mitchell, but the pass was underthrown, and so that will send us the to the first quarter. The first quarter break. All Stephen F. Austin, three turnovers forced and 21 points on the board. Third and long for Northwestern State as we get set to start the second quarter of action. Quaterius Hawkins remains in. The backup quarterback under pressure, throwing to the deep corner and throws it into the bench. A lot of pressure on Hawkins. We take a look at the first half stats, and that tells part of the tale so far. We'll tell you about the turnovers here in just a second, but Gary, SFA has really just dominated the first quarter of action. Yeah, they had some explosive plays early on, and also just the misfortune for Northwestern State on the turnovers. Those are giving Stephen F. Austin reason for, for joy, I would, I would uh, care to say. Meanwhile, starting running back Colby Burrell is limping off the field, being tended to by Jason Drury, the head athletic trainer for Northwestern State. So NSU will now punt it away. And once again, we will see Reed Honstein. Honstein had a snap go through his hands. Then he had a 31-yard punt on his first attempt. This one high, short, fair catch made, and SFA will have tremendous field position after Kylan Harris fair catches that one at the NSU 45-yard line. And, Gary, we were talking about turnovers, and really that's the, the story of this first quarter so far is the turnover advantage for Stephen F. Austin, three to nothing, including two fumble recoveries. Coming into this ball game, Stephen F. Austin had a total of four takeaways, one interception and three fumble recoveries, and now you add on these miscues. It's a pretty good job there of taking the ball away from their, their opponents, and they've they put points on the board as well with it. So Brian Maurer so far, five of seven, 42 yards. He's also got a rushing touchdown. We'll hand off up the middle. Jared Pedraza meets Gerald Wembley in the hole, no gain. And it's interesting in talking with the, the NSU coaching staff, they've given up a ton of big plays already in the first two games, but when they're sound, it's very hard for teams to actually drive the ball on them. Yeah, when they're running in inside, and they're not those explosive plays. They, they're not making five, six, seven yards per carry, as you might, might suspect. They have to grind against this defense if, if it's not been for the big plays. Balance spread look here. Outside handoff around the left side again, Jarrell Wembley, the sophomore from Houston. Good job, good job by by Cy coming down the side, by, down the line. Big defensive tackle number 97 for Northwestern State does a good job there, sliding down there, making a shoestring tackle. Big fella getting moving. So now a third down and long. SFA two for four on third down conversions so far. The first third down opportunity they had went for 58 yards. I believe that was a conversion. Blitz coming from the Demons and a beautiful comebacker 
And a first down by a couple of yards. That was just well done right on the money. Thrown to Cameron Dotson. Well done there that time by the quarterback. Meyer does a nice job of stepping into that throw, getting it out there, and he was going to get a little pop when he threw that football, which he did, but it was a well, well thrown football, and, and they moved the chains once again. This time, Maurer will keep around the right side. He'll lower the shoulder. Submarined under by Anthony Richard. Yeah, we were out there before the game going through some of these personnel, and I saw the quarterbacks working out, and I was surprised at how big Maurer was. He's, he's a big big quarterback, 6'4", 6'5", almost 220 pounds, and he can lower that shoulder and run through people, and got, he's pretty nifty as well, but he's not designed. He's not that really quick type of runner. He just won this kind of been more of a methodical straight straight downhill guy, but he's got good speed. Yeah, you don't throw for over 500 yards at Tennessee and not have the physical ability to get it done. This time he'll roll right, flip it on the out, and it's incomplete. It was under pressure. Again from Travion Sneed, the SMU transfer, and now third and short. It has been all Stephen F. Austin in this one. 85 yard. Total yard advantage here for the Lumberjacks. They'll move quickly. Cut back run and not enough. Yeah, I think it's going to be about a half a yard short. That was Nazir Sai, one of the transfers inside. Yeah, they need to get just inside the 21-yard line, they, and they did not. They're at the 22-yard line, so it looks like they're going to bring on the field goal unit here. They do have a tremendous kicker in Chris Campos, the junior from Nacogdoches. Preseason all-conference last year, 18 of 24. And with this field goal, should he make it from 39 yards, he will tie the school record for career field goals with 57. That kick has plenty of leg, and it is no good. A little to the right. So pushed it out. And so the career field goal record will stand for at least a little while longer. Storm Ruiz, Chuck Rollins, R Rollinson, your record is safe for now. And SFA leads 21-0. Back at Turpin Stadium in Natchitoches, you want to take a moment to uh, recognize one of the great Northwestern State supporters and uh, just a great Natchitoches native, uh, Jack Britton Jr., who we lost over the offseason. Uh, Britt was a member of the Northwestern State Demon Sports Network radio family as a sideline reporter for a number of years and just one of the great supporters of Northwestern State athletics in general, especially the football team. He was a former player as a wide receiver, played with Joe Delaney, another tremendous Northwestern State player. And uh, we just want to send our condolences and best wishes out to the entire Britton family. He was an absolute titan in Natchitoches and in the state of Louisiana, really, throughout government. And uh, he will be missed. A, a good friend of both of ours, Gary, and, and uh, just heartbroken over the news over the offseason. Yeah, Jack was uh, absolutely the best ambassador for Northwestern State Athletics and a, a great supporter of this university and Natchitoches in general. Always around, always uh, had, a, had something to, to be around and be a part of, and he was always there. And, that's what you have to have, people like that committed to the universities. And I'm sure that uh, uh, you know everyone is, shares our condolences to the family. And they were actually uh, treated today in the ball game here as uh, one of the recipients of one of the early awards. The family was out there on the field, and John, his brother, and other family members were, were, were there to receive that. And uh, uh, our best wishes to, uh, to the Britton family. Yeah, Jack was named the demon great of the game posthumously. Uh, for this first game of the home season. That pass goes incomplete through the hands of Jaron Mitchell. So nothing doing for Quaterius Hawkins and the Demon offense through one wide of Zach Patterson and then through the hands of Mitchell just shy of the first down marker. And the Demons will be forced to punt it away again. Yeah, didn't put one and one together to make two or make three. They just didn't get, get anything going in that drive. And doesn't seem like either quarterback here when they're in there, either Tyler Vanderwall or Katarius Hawkins is getting uh, you know, getting in rhythm and getting something working here. Now a timeout, timeout taken by Stephen timeout, F. Stephen Austin. F. Austin. Second charged of the first half. Well, you never want to take a timeout on special teams. Timeout. That is for sure. That's uh, definitely.
definitely not something you want to have happen, but Colby Carthel ends up taking the time out here on special teams to check everything out. We mentioned this uh, this matchup is a is a good one, and it's one that has been dominated mostly by Northwestern State. But in the last few years, Stephen F. Austin has really started to come on, uh, moving over to the WAC. They have, uh, under Colby Carthel, started to improve year in and year out and uh, find themselves with a lot of expectations coming into this season, especially now with the transfer quarter with uh, Brian Maurer in his second year as the starting QB. And even in just a rivalry here, this matchup, seven of the ten last games between these two have been won by Stephen F. Austin. So that's over to their favor right now. So Reed Hunstein, who had the missed snap to start with. That ball, he was absolutely hammered. Ball popped up in the air and was turned for a touchdown by Ahmad Murray. Has punted it away twice now for just under a 30 yard per punt average. Big rush comes from the right side of the NSU offense and another punt. This one will just bounce into SFA territory. So the short punt by Hanstein and once again, the Lumberjacks have terrific field position after missing a field goal on their last possession. You know, I'm an old special teams guy. I used to be the punt uh, fullback on the punt team, and I always look at the punter's depth. Most times you're looking at punting from a 15-yard depth. Hunstein has been at 13 yards today in this ball game behind the center. That may be by design, but what it does is it causes him to hurry his punts and he doesn't have as much time as you would if you had it 15 yards because it just, you know, obviously how much time the, the rushers come at you. So anyway, that might be something Northwestern State looks at as far as improving, you know, just the operation between the snapper and the, the kicker as far as getting that ball out there and potentially getting a little heftier kick than these shorter kicks that we're seeing. That was Daniel Dufour coming off the field, being helped by his teammates. Play action. Wheel route is wide open up the left sideline, and that one is a house call for Anthony Williams. Beautiful wheel route executed, and SFA a big play against a defense that allows a lot of them, and the Lumberjacks take a 27 to nothing lead. Yeah, it's got to be an MA, what you, what you call a missed assignment here. Cannot have someone as wide open as this receiver is out of the backfield there. And, Unfortunately for Northwestern State, but this has been the call of their season so far. The big plays defensively has been plaguing them. So Anthony Williams picking up his second catch of the season. That one goes for 50 yards and a touchdown. And SFA just dominant here in the first half against Northwestern State. Got out to that quick 21-0 lead. Things kind of settled in. Nothing doing for the offense of Northwestern State, including a wild interception inside the 10-yard line. And after a missed field goal for SFA, they strike with a one-play touchdown drive. A one-play 50-yard touchdown drive, the beautiful wheel route out of the backfield to Anthony Williams. And SFA all over Northwestern State, 28-0 here in the first half again. Got out to a 21-0 lead as NSU fumbled on a punt, returned for a touchdown, and then fumbled on the next possession. The quarterback did, and that turned into a touchdown, and then a big hit on the sideline. A lot of chatter going on. Again, a pretty heated uh, rivalry here between these two teams, even though they're not in the same league. Let's take a look at that hit, Gary. Yeah, out on the side here, definitely a big hit as this is a kick return. Watch number three come in from the sideline over here on the left side, and bingo right there. Pops him, number 12 and number three on that tackle as well. So first and 10 for the Demons. Quaterius Hawkins remains in. So far, Hawkins has not completed a pass in five attempts. This time he's going to go with the outside zone. And Anthony Boone this time lays the 
lumber from the backfield. Darius Boone, excuse me, lays the lumber from the backfield. Very physical run there, finishing it off. That's what you like to see with your running backs. Get him to the outside here. Got a lead blocker to the outside and watch that contact there. Bingo. And they got a little bit of extracurricular there. Scooter Adams getting in the mix. Scooter Adams mixing it up with Ahmad Murray, who had that fumble return for touchdown. Hawkins will keep on the backside quarterback draw. And goes down. So NSU just trying to find something positive here. This is a team coming in that averages just 17 points a game and gives up nearly 45 a game. They played two group of five opponents, Louisiana Lafayette and Louisiana Tech. Both of those games were close into the second half before the home teams pulled away. Brought a heavy package in here for Northwestern State. They've going to have the bigger guys up there on the line of scrimmage. Done this a Austin, couple of yeah. times so far this season. And that one just absolutely wiped out by SFA. Yeah, just too slow getting off the ball. The snap was in the quarterback and the running back not in time there with where the, the runner was going to be able to go. Defensively, Stephen F. Austin came off the edge. Brandon Lane does a nice job of penetrating and getting back there in the backfield. And a stoppage of play. We unpile the bodies and another punt upcoming for Northwestern State. So neither quarterback having success so far for the Demons. Vanderwall, five for eight, 51 yards, but through the interception in the red zone. And so far, Quaterius Hawkins is 0 for 5. NSU lost their starting quarterback, Zach Clement, from last season. He transferred to southeastern Louisiana. They were playing at Eastern Washington today up on the red turf. This one nearly blocked and will end up right around midfield yet again. So SFA keeping the Demons on their side of the field. Well, I think you need to block back that punter up just a little bit there just to not make that uh, be difficult there for him to get that punt off. Almost a blocked punt. So they actually mark it out at the 45. Demons did have their kicker, Brett Money, both punting and kicking. Money was averaging a little over 34 yards per punt. They've gone to Reed Honstein here, and so far he is averaging less than 30 yards per punt. Wide pitch. Flag comes down. That should be holding. Yeah, they got a hold there on the edge. Turned the pads and shoulders and held him away from the runner going through there for sure. This will be uh, just our third penalty of the ball game. Holding number 88 offense. Ten yard penalty from the previous spot. Repeat first down. That'll be on the outside. Tight end uh, LeVar Lindo. The redshirt sophomore and SFA back in its own territory for the first time in quite a while offensively. Last possession, a one-play 50-yard touchdown drive on the wheel route to Anthony Williams out of the backfield. Straight drop, blitz comes, good pocket, short crosser. And staying on his feet, that was Kion Wafer who gets the penalty yardage back plus three more. I almost stayed up and got extra yardage there, but... Uh... Defensively, almost a missed tackle by the defense there at the end of this play. He was going to continue to run there, watch that spin around if he keeps his balance. Emmanuel Brown spun him a bit, but did not bring him down. Going to try to set up the screen to the near side. Blockers out in front, and a first down for SFA. Getting great work out of their running backs. That was Jarrell Wembley. Well, I talked about this offensive line to start the ball game, and you know, talked about them having a lot of experience. All of them returning as starters, both tackles, both guards, and the center. And so it's pretty good job when you hear you can you know settle in there behind a big offensive line group and run the football, throw the football, and just kind of be comfortable with experience up there. And that was a good job of execution on that quick screen. SFA taking their time in full control of this one in Natchitoches. 
Lumberjacks trying to move to two and one on the season. Inside handoff. Very effective early in the game. The Demons have adjusted nicely to that. Haven't really seen the inside uh, between the guards running game as effective. As Donovan Green gets up off the bottom of the pile, Green leads the NSU team in tackles for loss and sacks. He's also forced to fumble this season. Another handoff inside, this time better yardage and a first down. That was Wembley again. And, and the don't. combination of Wembley and Williams getting it done. Well, they know they're able to get opening there and a good block there on the linebacker. And then the safeties are wide again. If they miss that tackle, it's a touchdown. It's a run to the end zone. The safeties are lining up outside the hash marks on either side of the field. And it's a, it's a long way to run to get into that middle of the field. These linebackers and defensive linemen for Northwestern State have to fit well on these guards and, and tackles up front. Again, straight up the middle of the field. This time the fit is better, but tackles broken by Wembley. Puts it inside the 15-yard line. And Stephen F. Austin completely dominating this game statistically. The Lumberjacks over 225 yards of offense. NSU has 61. And then you add in three turnovers on top of that by Northwestern State. And, Gary, that's how you end up down 28-0. Yeah, and, and punch, uh, ball through the hands of a punter and so forth. Those, those things happen. <laughs> and it just compounds. Going to go with the wide pitch this side. And terrific work in the backfield by Northwestern State. Era Rawls was in there filling initially along with Ty Ely. Uh, didn't give Anthony Williams a chance to get around the edge or the corner. Good job defensively. So... You know, at times this defense looks like they're, they, they come to play, but there are times, Patrick, that they have some, some holes in that defense, definitely on some of these explosive plays in the running game and plays down the middle of the field. And now a third and long, and SFA taking its time now. Time of possession was about even before this drive started. Mauer from the pocket, good protection, throws the... Hook route right at the sticks. Yeah, it's going to be close. Where is it marked at? I'm not sure they're giving him the first down. Yes, they are. They're giving him the first down. Well, maybe not just yet. Yeah, they are. So that is first and goal inside the 10-yard line. That was Kylan Harris. And again, SFA taking their time here. Squeezing the clock here at the end of the half. Already up 28-0 in this one. Field. Donovan Green doing a good job penetrating that time, kind of wrecked everything. And Big Fellow does a nice job there making a tackle for loss. Green picking up the tackle for loss. Watch 99, they're just getting ready to make the tackle, and uh, he has nowhere to go. Anthony Williams spinning around trying to make something happen, but uh, Donovan Green saying, No way, young man. Green has been the star in the middle of that NSU defense, the junior from Palmetto, Louisiana. So now second and goal. Good, good, good coverage that time. Back shoulder fade. And Emmanuel Brown, who really wasn't even looking back, no. it just kind of hit him in the back. Exactly. Good coverage. He's, it was a face-up technique that he has as the cornerback, and he's facing him up, and the ball just had to go through him to the receiver and just wasn't going to make it. on third and goal. Going to try the quarterback draw this time. And will not get there. And I would imagine we're going to have another opportunity for Chris Campos to maybe tie the career record for most field goals. He missed a 39-yarder earlier, wide right. This one will be considerably closer for the 5'11", 255-pound junior from Nacogdoches. That was just his second miss of the season in seven attempts. And this will be from 23, opposite hash. Oh, 
Good snap and hold. Plenty of lag on that one, and that one is good. So Chris Campos has tied the career school record for most field goals made, 57. He joined Storm Ruiz and Chuck Rawlinson, the most field goals in a career at SFA. 31-0 Lumberjacks. 31-0 the lead for Stephen F. Austin against Northwestern State here just before halftime. As the Lumberjacks take another short field, 11 plays, 39 yards, took six minutes and one second off the clock. And SFA gets a 23-yard field goal from Chris Campos to push their lead out to 31-nothing. And it has been just all SFA all night long so far. Yeah, I haven't seen a lot of energy from this football team. I'm not sure that there's anybody out there you know, who's going to be the catalyst of this. It just takes one play for Northwestern State, I would think, to kind of just you know feel better about your team, about yourselves, and get moving here. But nothing is really going their way right now. Longest play from scrimmage for the Demons, a 29-yard pass to Trayvon Jones. And bringing it out from the end zone. Nowhere to go there, and just across the 10-yard line. Trying to get something happening for NSU. But nothing going for Miles Kit Denton, the junior transfer from Central Arkansas. So we have seen both quarterbacks, Tyler Vanderwall and Quaterius Hawkins. Hawkins is back in. So far, 0 for 5 on the game. I'm actually curious if Vanderwall might be injured. See if Tyler Moody can uh, find us something on that. And nothing doing on the handoff. The rushing yardage in this game so far, kind of indicative of how the whole game has gone. As you saw Garrison make the stop. Overall rushing yardage right now, 96 to 10. Wow. Now keep in mind that does come with a 20-yard loss on the snap that went through the hands of the punter, Hanstein. But NSU just getting nothing going offensively. Trying the right side. Let's, uh, let's throw it down on the sideline to Tyler Moody to get an update because we have not seen Tyler Vanderwall as SFA takes the timeout here, and we're actually going to take the break as well. So uh, we'll get an update from Tyler Moody when we come back on the uh, status of Tyler Vanderwall. I have not seen him since he threw that interception inside the 10-yard line, and the Demon offense has been largely inept. All Stephen F. Austin late in the first half here in Natchitoches, Turpin Stadium. Third and long for the Northwestern State offense, and Quaterius Hawkins, who has yet to complete a pass, and he will throw that one, and it is intercepted at the 35-yard line. So Hawkins finally completes a pass, but unfortunately for him, Gary, it was to the opposite team. And SFA, yet another thing going right there, plus four in turnover margin. Yeah, not a very good throw at all. The only receiver there is the defender, and looking to throw the ball out of bounds, I would guess. I'm not sure there's no one there. Oh, goodness, yeah. Charles Demings yeah, comes away with the interception. We were curious about Tyler Vanderwall and our other Tyler, Tyler Moody. Uh, Moody, uh, any update on Tyler Vanderwall? Is there an injury to speak of? No, Patrick, Tyler Vanderwall is healthy. This was a coach's decision to turn the ball over to Hawkins and let him run the quarterback position for a little while. We may see that switch back here soon, though, so both quarterbacks are uh, available here on the Northwestern State sideline. We're watching Vanderwall. He looks like he has a little bit of a limp, but it doesn't look uh, significant. Or he may just kind of walk that way. I don't know. Underneath crosser, that one is caught. And out of bounds goes Kylan Harris. Yeah, same play they ran previously. They ran the wheel route out there, but this time that was covered, and they came down with the underneath crosser, which was open. So good play design that time again by Stephen F. Austin. Brian Maurer in the Lumberjack offense looking to potentially end this game before halftime. Run right up the middle. Good tackle in the hole made by Travion Sneed. Lumberjacks who moved very slowly on their last possession, a six-minute uh, drive that only went 39 yards. Now moving quickly right before half. 
Going to throw the fade up the right side, and that one is knocked away. Terrific coverage by Anthony Richard. Yeah, Richard does a nice job there of, of, of the recollecting. When he sees the receiver, he puts his hands on the football. Watch at the end here. When the receiver gets the ball, he puts his hands right there. That's good coaching, good job of stripping the ball away and not allowing that pass to be complete. Now second and 10, and SFA can regroup. Lumberjacks already comfortably in command of this one. Now with a plus four turnover margin in this game. Mauer gets blitzed, stands in the pocket, throws the fade, that one incomplete. Again, good coverage on the outside, that time the opposite side for Emmanuel Brown. Yeah, Brown underneath the coverage. And Doing a good job knocking that one away here, so third down and long. Mauer after that incompletion to Reichel, 11 of 17, 146 yards, two touchdowns, no interceptions. He's also run for 18 yards in a TD, so three total touchdowns for Mauer. Right before halftime, looking for more. Third and 10. This time they'll run it right up the middle. And that will be a first down. And Gary, that's just uh, for a defense disheartening on third and ten to get run right up the middle. Well, that's the that's where the defense is allowing you to go. It's man to man up front. You've got to push one of those offensive linemen or defensive linemen aside, and you get a hole. And it's the safety has to be made by the has to make the tackle. This time, a tackle in the backfield. As NSU was on top of that one, that was Kendall Harmon, one of Moody's matchups. Kendall Harmon in the Northwestern State rushing defense and kind of go back and look at Moody's matchup from the first half. The NSU rush defense against Jarrell Wembley and Anthony Williams and its advantage SFA by 100 yards. Though to the back of the end zone too tall. Was looking back there for Ty Love but a little too strong. Uh, Wembley already has 95 yards rushing. Williams has uh, four carries for minus two, but overall 111 yards rushing for SFA, 11 yards rushing for Northwestern State. That tells its story. We were talking with Demon offensive coordinator Bo Blair, and he was talking about the, the metrics tell you that if you run the ball effectively, you tend to win. Yeah, also the quarterback, uh, Uterius Hawkins, hasn't completed a pass. So... Those two things, you can't run it, you can't throw it. Guess what? Yeah. <laughs> NSU so far with 11 yards rushing and 51 yards passing. It is almost a 200-yard advantage here right before halftime. SFA now 40 plays for 257 yards. Five more plays, and it will be exactly 200 yards advantage in the first half. And again, as we mentioned earlier, it's you already have a 200 yard advantage offensively. Then you add in four turnovers by the opposing offense, and that's why it's 31 0. It's hard enough to overcome a 200 yard disadvantage in total offense. Then you add to that the turnovers, including a bizarre interception inside the red zone. Down inside the 10 yard line by Northwestern State, Tyler Vanderwall. So Vanderwall, 5 for 8, 51 yards with a pick. Quaterius Hawkins, 0 for 6 with an interception. It hasn't been a good night for the Northwestern State quarterbacks to get anything going. And the defense has had some holes as well, turnovers. You're going through it all, Patrick, and it's uh, pointing everything Stephen F. Austin's way. Mauer, plenty of time, and throws it out of the back of the end zone. So it looks like a another field goal opportunity here for SFA. Well, Mr. Campos going to be the big man on campus after he makes, uh, the, makes big this man, one. the big man on campus. That's it. Yeah, I, got, I had to throw I, it in. I, like, I appreciate that. I always enjoy a good pun, my friend. Well, he's got a 30 yarder dead in the middle of the field to try to become the all time field goal leader in Stephen F. Austin history. Snap and hold are good. Plenty of lag on that one, and there you go. Chris Campos, the junior from Nacogdoches, now the all-time leader 
in career field goals in Stephen F. Austin history as he picks up his 58th and moves ahead of Storm Ruiz and Chuck Rawlinson. Now he is all alone in Stephen F. Austin history. Well, congratulations, that young man. And, and by the way, just a, a junior. Time. Yeah, he's been doing it though for a while. First team all whack last year in preseason. All United Athletic Conference. We'll tell you more about the United Athletic Conference in the second half as it has been a, a journey for the former Atlantic Sun and WAC teams to try to find their way into a possible automatic qualifier into the FCS playoffs. But right now it is all Stephen F. Austin in this one, 34 zip. Gary, what do you what do you tell your team at halftime if you're Brad Laird? You know, it's 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 everybody looking the mirror time. Exactly what they what he'll say is basically to say, hey, just put one play together at a time, and you've got to make a commitment to come out and play your best football. This is not Northwestern State's best football. I'm sure of that. They just need to continue to do the things that they've been you know, been coached to do, and just try to improve one play at a time and that's exactly how you have to make it go it's not an over it's not a big overarching fix in any one area you just have to pull together and get some good positive things happen for your team i was mentioning brad laird has had uh, an unusual head coaching career here at northwestern state 16 and 37 overall but 15 of his 16 wins have been in conference play last year northwestern state was playing for a, a conference championship the last two weeks but went 0-5 in non-conference action. So the Demons ended up 4-7 on the season, starting 4-0 in conference play before dropping the last two as Darius Boone picks up a first down. Boone will get the carry again. Good strong running by him. Brad Laird will take the timeout. Yeah, this is positive for Northwestern State, getting a couple runs here that are moving the offense and potentially moving the chains. And not a lot of time left on the clock. However, you know, this is something that you can go in and say, hey, we can move the football, we can run the football, let's continue to do that and build on it. They moved the ball in, into scoring zone area, but you know, a turnover. A couple of different times, yeah. actually, in the first quarter. First drive, got into, into SFA territory, then went backwards. That's when the uh, snap over the head of the punter, or through his hands, ended up being returned for a touchdown. And then had a long drive not long after that. That was the bizarre interception. Actually was deflected. Uh, Vanderwall was kind of trying to scramble, and at the last second flip it, it hit an SFA defender, ended up on top of a pile of bodies, including Vanderwall's where it was picked up and ultimately an interception because it was just laying on top of one of uh, or a couple of different players that were on the ground. So SFA has guys 30 yards from the line of scrimmage. Two man rush demons are going to throw a screen. There's no blockers in front and so that ends up going backwards. And that's going to be the last play of the half. And that, by the way, is the first completion of the game for Quaterius Hawkins. And it ends up going for negative yardage. So Northwestern State finds itself down 34-0. Colby Carthel and the Lumberjacks absolutely having their way with the Demons here in Natchitoches. Coming up, halftime. All Stephen F. Austin at halftime here in Natchitoches, Turpin Stadium. Patrick Netherton, Gary Reasons with you. Along with Tyler Moody down on the sideline, you see SFA 21 quick in the first quarter and then uh, shut down Northwestern State entirely. Gary, we look at our first half stats and the stats tell the tale. The turnovers aren't on there, but it's 4 nothing in favor of SFA. It's, it's all Lumberjacks. Yeah, 257 yards total offense. Just look across there to 79 for Northwestern State. Nothing really happened on the offensive side of the ball in the time of possession. You got to hold on to the football moving around. You got to get some yardage. That's not happening for Northwestern State. One of seven on third downs. Not a good picture. Katerius Hawkins completed only one pass, the last one of the last play of the half. And that was not even for a positive yard. Him coming in in relief of Tyler Vanderwolf on Northwestern State. It's been all Stephen F. Austin in this in this uh, first half, and uh, 
Brad Laird has got his, a big job here to turn this demon effort around in this, uh, thir in this second half. Well, Tyler Moody talked to both coaches coming out of the locker room at halftime. Tyler, uh, thoughts on both sidelines? Well, obviously quite different on each sideline. Coach Carthel very happy with what he saw in the first half. He just wants his guys to stay focused in the second half, continue to keep the standard on the SFA sideline. He loved everything he saw in the first half, except for some downfield passing. That's something you may see in the second half uh, as SFA wants to continue to attack a little bit. And then obviously on this side for Northwestern State, Coach Brad Laird, um, not very pleased with the first half. His message to the team at half is there's not a 34-point touchdown. So he wants to come out, chip away at this lead, potentially get back in this game. And then as far as the quarterback situation is concerned, pretty good chance we're going to see both Hawkins and Vanderwall in the second half, Patrick. Well, we saw them both in the first half, and to not much effect, Vanderwall had a couple of nice drives, ended up with a uh, the, that bizarre interception that was deflected and intercepted that on the top of a pile of bodies. Vanderwall threw for 51 yards and a pick. Quaterius Hawkins had one completion at the very end of the half, he also threw an interception. So NSU will start inside its own 20-yard line, and it will be Tyler Vanderwall in at quarterback here to start the second half. Well, he was five of eight completions on the in, in, in his effort there, Patrick. So maybe they'll get a little spark with him throwing the football. Try to find something to to build on and get down the field and put some points on the board. Well, the good news from the Northwestern State side of things is it's not a Southland Conference game. Uh, in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't mean anything. However, this is a, uh, a pattern that has uh, sort of reared its ugly head for Northwestern State in the last couple of years in terms of being uh, really struggling in non-conference action. Scooter Adams right up the middle of the field. He can go. He'll take it out to midfield. Best play by far of the game for Northwestern State. And I like to see Tempo here pick it up, go up on the line of scrimmage. Good job here getting a hole inside for, for Adams, and he takes off, and it's an explosive play for the Demons. Demons moving quickly. Adams gets it again, gets another nice hole up the middle. Adams yeah. will power forward. Chains hadn't even gotten set, and Scooter Adams picks up nearly, uh, and he will pick up another first down. Yeah, they, they just bounce the chains on the opposite sideline. You know, okay, now we made that mark, make another one, here we go. And now we've got an injury on SFA's side. There's the last run from Scooter Adams. He was ready to get up and move, but Jer Jeremiah Walker, the safety, down in the middle, and that is, that is a potentially huge loss for this defense. Walker coming in, second team all-conference last year, preseason all-conference this year. Walker's kind of the heart and soul of the back end of that defense. He will get up and jog it off. So NSU with by far its two best plays back-to-back. Scooter Adams, a 32-yard run, and then follows that up with an 11-yard run. Adams now three carries for 47 yards. Yeah, I think tempo here may be in the, the plans here for Northwestern State. Get the ball up, up to, get up the line of scrimmage, move that football. That was two runs right up the middle as well. Vanderwall looking left. Now steps up and down he goes. Protection breaks down. Did not have anyone open downfield, and that'll be a sack. Yeah, you're exactly right, Patrick. There was no one open on the on the play. Well covered that time by Stephen F. Austin defensively, and Tyler Vanderwall steps up into a to a mean defensive unit there with a loss on the play. Second sack of the ball game for SFA. Northwestern State has not sacked Br uh, Brian Maurer. Matter of fact, have not even really pressured Maurer much in this game. Offensive line for SFA has been superb. So second and 15 now. This time plenty of time. Deep sideline throw. That one is caught. Ball comes out late from Jaron Mitchell, but recovered by Northwestern State as Zach Patterson got on it. That is a long throw, Gary. Yeah, this is. It's long and not getting a lot of yards there, but still. Receiver catches a football positive here, has a chance to convert this. Third and third medium here. Got to figure everything in this area is go for it. Ah, definitely. There's down, no, there's no <laughs> down 34 nothing. No doubt about that. Three-man rush. Good pocket. 
And that one popped up in the air, almost intercepted again. He was looking for Trayvon Jones, the tight end, sitting down over the middle right at the sticks. Now you got to catch those balls, get and move those chains, and got to convert as well here on fourth down. So not, not a lot of conversion opportunities tonight here for Northwestern State. This one has to go. You've got to continue to move, Mark, move this football down the field. Demons are 0 for 1 on fourth down tonight. They are 1 for 8 on third down now. Blitz coming up the middle. Vanderwall throws to the middle. That pass is popped up in the air. And is it intercepted? It is. Just popped straight up in the air and picked off by Dylan Tooker. And actually a positive result there for Northwestern State. No, they called State. it incomplete. Well, okay, incomplete pass then. Nonetheless, it's a turnover on downs. Stephen F. Austin defense does hold here against Northwestern State. And they did have a few plays to get that ball on the positive side of the field for Northwestern State, but uh, does not result in any points. Northwestern moves the ball into SFA territory, but the Lumberjacks stand up and stop the Demons on fourth down and five and will take over for their first possession. A near interception on fourth down and five. All tips up here. It's a yeah, you can bobbles see it. It, it bobbles at the bottom. Yeah, you can see it kind of move around as he hit the ground, but Nearly a pick for Dylan Tooker. And SFA takes over, firmly in control of this ball game. Demons just over 120 yards of offense now with that last drive. Big hit in the backfield. And again, Gary, we've seen tackles for loss for Northwestern State, but what we haven't seen is any real pressure on Brian Mauer. No, he hasn't been able to be pressured. You know, he hasn't had Ball's tremendous Throw, you know, yards throwing the football down the field. That's not this game. This game is really was just imposing the will of this offensive line against Northwestern State, and they've been able to move the ball efficiently here. I'm impressed with Maurer and, and how he's conducted himself as a quarterback in his ball game. Another handoff up the middle, and that time a few yards to get the lost yardage back. It'll end up being third down and nine. Yeah, what a first half did Drell Wimbley have. Big numbers in the first half for him, over 100 yards. Meanwhile, the Lumberjacks are 5 for 10 on third down conversions. Facing third and long, Mauer with four receivers out. Instead, they'll just hand it off up the middle. And a broken tackle will turn into a first down and plenty more. Terrific, strong running by Jarrell Wembley. Well, that's kind of been the story of a lot of plays here against Northwestern State this season. At the attack, you got to tackle, you got to make that tackle, and unfortunately, those turn into big plays, explosive plays. Unable to get the get them to the ground was Jaden Ward, first one on to that tackle, but uh, goes into the secondary for a big game for SFA. Jaden Ward, the leading tackler for Northwestern State, coming in. Had a chance to get his team off the field defensively, but could not make it happen. Good, strong run, and that puts Jarrell Wembley over 100 yards rushing for the second consecutive week. This time, the second running back, Anthony Williams, who has a 50-yard touchdown reception in this game. He'll pick up four. As SFA, got to imagine, Gary, going to be working the clock. You, you're kind of in that odd spot for Stephen F. Austin where you're trying to still be aggressive, put more points up, but you're also trying to shorten the game. Yeah, a little bit of both, Patrick. But they've got a combination of backs here between Wimley and Williams. They both had good nights tonight. Well, you know you're confident when you run it on third down. They've got the wheel route open yet again up the far sideline, and yet again they hit it for the touchdown. This time, Kylan Harris, there is a flag in the backfield as Harris was wide open down the far sideline, but we'll check the flag. So the holding against the backup tight end, Keyshawn Williams, will bring back a touchdown throw of 48 yards. And again, we continue to see missed assignments defensively for Northwestern State, leading to big plays. Yeah, unless that hold caused someone to you know, miss that assignment, that's, that's something between the secondary and the linebackers. You've got to get everybody covered, and, it's, and it just happened too many times this evening, and really 
course of the first couple of ball games as well. So back it up to second and 16. Mauer to the deep corner, has the receiver, but overthrows him. Wide open was Ty Love on the corner pattern. And Ron Mauer would like to have that ball back because he has an open receiver down there on the near sideline at the just inside the 30 yard line. That ball just got a little bit too far outside. We've got an injury update on the uh, Northwestern State defense down on the field with Tyler Moody. Tyler. Anthony Richard is headed to the locker room to get an IV. He's not injured, but certainly uh, dealing with some cramping at the moment. So they're taking him to the locker room to get an IV uh, possible to return. That's uh, the starting corner for Northwestern State, Anthony Richard. So Reggie Strong, the senior transfer from Fresno State, is in at one corner spot. Going to set up the screen here. That one's intercepted. Yes, it is. A remarkable play by Donovan Green. What a job reading the defensive, I mean, excuse me, the, the screen pass by the offense. Donovan Green slips underneath there where he's trying to throw the football down to Anthony Williams. Excellent job by the big guy sliding across there. He's made his presence known tonight, not only in the backfield being disruptive, but uh, now at the line of scrimmage with an interception on that screen pass. The nose tackle diving pick and watch the uh, watch him keep it off the ground. Now it's a good job by the big fella. Some positive for Northwestern State right there. A night where not much has been positive. Donovan Green picks up an interception. NSU will tell you in just a moment is specializing in first time interceptors. As a matter of fact, the last nine interceptions for Northwestern State since the start of 2022 have been by nine different players. You must stay up way long at night trying to learn all these things and figure those things out. How did you know that? That's Jason Pugh for okay, you right there. there you go. Sports information L director. Little help. Little hey, help. hey, shout out to all sports information directors. <laughs> they are the lifeblood of what we do. Along with our producers, of course. As Darius Boone gets a couple. And NSU trying to capitalize on the momentum of the Donovan Green pick. And again, Tyler Vanderwall back at quarterback here for Northwestern State. Demons just have not been able to get anything going offensively with any sort of consistency. Demons lining up with plenty of time on the play clock. Third down and six. They'll get the offsides. That'll be five free, it would appear. Yeah, at the top of the screen, the defensive end jumps across and offside, number 54, defense causing a reaction. Five-yard penalty, repeat third down. That's one of those, Gary, where you want your center, Braden Staggs, as soon as he sees that, go ahead and snap it and get your free play. Yeah, some, some coaches are ambivalent about whether you snap it or not because it, you may not get the call. It may, it may just be a flinch and doesn't go across the, uh, penetrate the line there, so. So now third down and a little less than two. They're going to throw for it. Hit as he throws, ball is free. SFA will come up with it. And Tyler Vanderwall is down hurt. Really on the field is a fumble recovered by the defense. Yeah. Vanderwall, who has lost his last two seasons to injury. Yeah, that ball strip sack fumble right there. It's called a fumble. Is the ball going to move forward? I think it was knocked out of his hand, but let's see if we can slow that replay down. We'll take a look at it. But uh, out on the field. Luke Watson comes away with the fumble recovery in Northwestern State. Gets an interception and then turns it over for the fifth time in this ball game. SFA all over things here in Natchitoches against Northwestern State up 34 nothing. The fifth turnover forced by Stephen F. Austin. A terrific outside rush. That leads to the fumble recovery. Aaron Austin knocking it away from Tyler Vanderwall, and then right down the middle of the field, Anthony Williams gone. Another big play touchdown for Stephen F. Austin, and the Lumberjacks pouring it on here in Natchitoches. Now well, this is a play that they've seen, that the defense, how they react on these plays inside on the run game, and this is one where you know you're going to have a receiver in the middle of the field and nobody there to cover him, so good job of scouting here for Stephen F. Austin and understanding what's happening here in the secondary. Jared Pedraza should have had coverage on him, but his eyes are in the backfield. That is the second long touchdown by Anthony Williams.
the running back now has two receptions for 103 yards and two TDs, a 50 and a 53 yard reception, both one play scores. This is not Campos. So the extra point is good as the Lumberjacks go to uh, Brady McNew, the redshirt freshman from South Lake, Texas. And SFA just adds on to its lead. Sorry, Brody McNew on that extra point as the Lumberjacks get a one play touchdown drive. Second time they've done that and Gary, another turnover by NSU. It is now five turnovers forced by Stephen F. Austin. Big turnovers and explosive plays combined in this situation. Huge plays again for Stephen F. Austin, and it, it's, it's just a route here. So SFA absolutely hammering the demons here in Natchitoches. The home opener going the wrong way for Demon head coach Brad Laird. is it was 21 points right from the jump. SFA, long drive for a touchdown. You follow that up with a snap on a punt that goes through the punter's hands. He gets annihilated, ball pops up in the air and is returned for a touchdown. And then NSU fumbles on its next possession inside its own territory. SFA scores oh. on that and an absolute decleater. Whoa. as the Lumberjacks get a big hit from Iman Garman. That's a good tackle on kickoff coverage, for let's sure. Go, let's go down to the field and get an update, injury update on Demon's starting quarterback, Tyler Vanderwall from Tyler Moody. Yeah, they took Northwestern State quarterback Tyler Vanderwall into the tent. They were evaluating him for an elbow injury, grimace on his face. He came out of the tent, tried to warm up, took three or four practice throws and gave the training crew uh, the word that he was not going to be able to continue in this game. Also saw number 14 TJ Fayard getting loose over here but right now Hawkins is in at quarterback. Terrius Hawkins will hand off and this becomes an interesting time for Brad Laird. You have Quaterius Hawkins who has been ineffective. One for seven for uh, no yards and one interception and now you're starting quarterback, and you just have to feel for seventh-year senior Tyler Vanderwall, who has not played a full season in a long time. You definitely feel bad for him. But you do have, as uh, Tyler mentioned, J.T. Fayard, a freshman out of Texas that the Demon staff is very high on. And you wonder if he might get some action here late in this game. And, Gary, this is where the four game redshirt rule comes into play because he doesn't necessarily redshirt. He doesn't have to burn his redshirt if he plays uh, a couple of quarters here. I think that is one of the, the best rules that has been put into college football in recent years when, you, when they implemented that. They didn't really know how it would go, but I think it has been a very positive move to be able to give players some, some game experience as a freshman and they don't burn Find that out. freshman redshirt opportunity, which is, which is good and what you're talking about, out. Patrick. So that could come to play here with, with that position or really any position on the football team. Stephen F. Austin will take the timeout. We'll take, him as, take that as well. It is all Lumberjacks here tonight. Well, Chief Caddo may still be in Nacogdoches, but he was going back there anyway in this one. Third and long for the Demons as we get back into action. NSU is one for nine on third downs and has lost its starting quarterback as Quaterius Hawkins gets a completion, but not for much, not anywhere near the sticks. But a positive play offensively for Hawkins, who before that completion was one for seven for zero yards and an interception. Yeah, not so sure on the play design. They're not really attempting to even get a first down or get to the first down yardage marker. Defense is allowing them to catch it up front and make that tackle, which they do. Reed Honstein will punt it away. Four punts so far for a 25-yard average. Also had a snap go through his hands. He picked it up, was uh, decleated. Ball got popped in the air and was returned for a touchdown by SFA. Lumberjacks will bring a little pressure. This one high, short, fair caught. And SFA will start once again in Demon territory. They have... 
lived on that side of the 50. So, Gary, you're, you're Brad Laird at this point. This game has obviously gone completely sideways for you. You get next week off. Good or bad? Well, I'm going to be sitting here right now thinking, okay, what players am I going to put in this ball game, whether they be freshmen or any players on the team, to see who's going to compete. It comes down to competing, and you want to have some a team that's going to go out there and be be competitive. And right now, Northwestern State, in my opinion, is not as competitive as they need to be ready for conference play. As you said, Patrick, they have a week off before their next game, and they certainly need to look themselves in the mirror, and every single player across the board need to understand that it's going to take a lot more commitment than what they're showing on the field here tonight. New quarterback in the ballgame for the Lumberjacks, Preston Weeks, the redshirt senior will hand to a new running back, and that is the first run by a running back other than Wembley or Williams as Jalen Jenkins, the freshman from Dallas, Texas, Cedar Hill High School, picks up the first down. And you're going through the roster here a little bit for Stephen F. Austin. They're, com they're uh, clearly in front of this ball game. They understand what they're doing. They're going to get some of these players to get some development and some, some reps in this football game. All Lumberjacks in this one. Weeks will throw the deep corner. And it's incomplete, a little wide of his intended target. He so, had the man open there on the outside, just didn't, didn't make the, the complete throw, get it out there. That was Kylan Harris. So Weeks has not attempted a pass yet this season, the redshirt senior from Garland, Texas. So seeing his first action, he is a uh, Baylor transfer. And a good feeling for a head coach, Colby Carthel, as he gets to go to the backups with basically seven minutes left to go in the third quarter of a ball game. So Colby Carthel has to be pretty excited about that. Tyler Moody will catch up with, we assume, Colby Carthel in the post game. And we talked about this offensive line. They're, left, they're leaving their starting offensive line in there right now for this football game and they've they've played exceptionally well they've kept their quarterback mostly clean and they've made the plays in the running game where they've had some holes open up here against this northwestern state defense and uh, have to applaud that offensive line for stephen f austin yeah nsu does not have a sack yet in this game that is a missed tackle on the outside and a first down for sfa on third and long as ty love comes away with it Spins away from a tackle and picks up first down yardage. And SFA on the move behind their backup QB, Preston Weeks. Tackling drills, you got to make those plays in the open field. Those plays can turn, continue into explosive plays after that missed tackle. That is another few extra few yards. These things kind of have a compounding effect, Patrick, and that's what we're seeing. Brian Maurer finishes 12 for 22, 199 yards passing, three touchdowns, one interception. Also ran for 18 yards and a TD, so accounted for four touchdowns in this ball game. The screen pass goes too tall, looking again for Jalen Jenkins. Well, that was well played defensively that time by Northwestern State, and Weeks does the right thing. He gets it out there and tosses it actually away from his, his receiver because he was, he was covered and would have been taken down for a loss. SFA, 240 more yards than Northwestern State. The Demons do not have yet 130 yards of offense in this game. Two by two set with the pistol. Yeah, bring in pressure. Here. under pressure, gonna throw the corner pattern, has a man, and it is incomplete. Well, nice defense there by Cam Hardy, getting that hand in there in coverage. Man-to-man -man coverage up the, up the seam there, and he does a nice job of dislodging that football from it being caught. Watch his left hand here of Cam Hardy, number nine from Northwestern State. Gets that ball, knocks it away. That's well done. Kyan Hart, uh, Kyan Wafer, excuse me, was the intended receiver. So SFA facing third and long. The Lumberjacks are seven for 13 on third downs in this one, plus 50%. Good pocket again, deep slant. That one's incomplete, threw it wide. Was looking for Wafer again. And now fourth down and another field goal attempt. You wonder if it will be Campos again or if they will go to the backup kicker. I think I see Mr. Campos there. Nope, may I'm, nope. I am incorrect. Nope, that will be the uh, 
the backup kicker. This will be a 33-yard attempt. 33-yard attempt upcoming from Brody McNew. That one has a ton of leg on it, and it is no good wide left. So McNew had a big leg on it, but just pulled it a little bit. And so really the only thing that's gone wrong for Stephen F. Austin tonight, Gary, is they've missed two field goals. That's it, two field goals. <laughs> I mean, if, if that's the worst thing that's happened to you in a game, you got to feel pretty good about yourself. Yeah, it's, it's been a pretty good night here for the Lumberjacks, and they have taken care of business. Opportunity has not. They've answered. Uh, they've, they've pretty much held Northwestern State in check for most of this ball game, and it's just it's just been a wonderful night here if you're a Lumberjack fan. You know, uh, SFA, a, a very real family affair at Stephen F. Austin. They have a father and two sons who are on their coaching staff and their head coach. His father is on the coaching staff. You mentioned Don Carthel uh, earlier in the broadcast. Don Carthel is up in the booth. We actually see him up here behind us. He's on the headset. Longtime coach was uh, actually employed his son Colby as his oh, sorry, defensive sorry. coordinator. 67. Offense. And so when Colby, First down. now at Stephen F. Austin, got the job at Commerce and now SFA, he brought his dad, Don, with him. Meanwhile, his offensive line coach, Bill Blyle, who was a defensive coordinator on Colby Carthel's dad's staff at Eastern New Mexico, his two sons are both coaching. Actually, one of the sons was on the staff first, then they hired the dad, then they hired the other brother. And so Bill Blyle, Kevin Blyle, and Tim Blyle, Bill Blyle, the offensive line coach, and the dad, Kevin is the outside wide receivers coach, Tim is the tight ends coach. And Colby Carthel talking to him this week, he said, look, we're a family-oriented operation. He said, we have markers, uh, basically just marker marks all over our walls, where he said, we have a ton of kids under 12, they get to come into the facility, be a part. He said they go grab the dry erase markers. He said they're marking on the walls everywhere. He said it's it's a bit of a mess, but he said that's what we like to to bring to our approach as a family style. And by the way, last year had a set of twins on the coaching staff. So father and two sons. The head coach's dad is on the staff. And last year they had twins. Throw to the deep middle of the field, jump ball, and that one is incomplete. They're trying to get, get, it, get it out there to, to Wafer. Tuan Hines was uh, excuse me, down the middle of the field, but uh, couldn't come up with it. Demons will punt it away. Yeah, and, and it's interesting. Family is a big thing for both of these staffs. Brad Laird, Sundays are family day. All the, the wives, the kids, the girlfriends, everyone, uh, everyone gets to come up and be a part of the staff on Sunday evenings. So he likes to have kind of a family atmosphere around his squad as well. So both coaches doing it the right way, that is for sure. This punt high, spiraling. And the fair catch is called for. And that will flip the field a touch, at least for what uh, this game has been played mostly on Northwestern State side of the field. Yeah, when Northwestern State looks at this and they see the punting numbers, they're not going to see a good, a good result. They're going to be probably less than 25 yards average per punt in, in, in net punting. So yeah, that was, that was 34. That was one of the better ones for Hunt. That was, that was a better one, but the... The ones prior to that have, have fallen short as well, so that might be an area where they uh, look to improve to get some extra yardage. That's that hidden yardage, Patrick, in a game where you know this offense they're not having to go the distance, and that's what uh, you talk about with defense. It kind of helps the defensive squad if you continue to make make teams drive the field, which Northwestern State at times has been able to hold teams away from those long drives. You know, if only the punt team for Northwestern State had Gary reasons to run the fake punt. <laughs> And pick up that, big those don't yardage. Work, those don't work all the time. But uh, how many did you end up running in your career? Uh, I know yeah. you had the famous one, but did you did you get any more of them? Yeah, in the National Football League, I actually audibled to that to that punt uh, probably three times. Okay. Yeah. Over Successful each time. Uh, each time. Perfect. Over, uh, first down each time. So Perfect. That's worked. what you're looking for. You just need a first down. 
When you've got a, uh, an intellectual giant in the backfield calling the plays, it helps. Hand off and a tackle for loss for Northwestern State. Demons actually have quite a few tackles for loss in this game, but they've also given up a ton of big plays. Well, that's the, kind of the double-edged sword. If, you, if you're going penetrating inside and you don't make that tackle in the backfield, what that means is you're giving up a gap or an area around the player potentially, and those can give big gashing holes and get into the second and third levels of the defense. And that was that has happened tonight. That was Johnny Mitchell, the uh, North DeSoto product, who missed the first two games of the season. The uh, Demon coaching staff believing Johnny Mitchell is a guy who is arguably the best interior defensive lineman for NSU. Yeah, good step and throw right there by Weeks on that, on that pass. Gets the completion to Cole Lemons. 6'3", 185, the red shirt freshman. Going for it on fourth down here. A couple of yards to go. Can Northwestern State stop them? Looks like they may have. Yeah, I think that's a stop on fourth down. So the Demons will get the turnover on downs. And that's the thing I would imagine if you're Brad Laird and Weston Glosser that's frustrating so much is you've given up two one-play touchdown drives in this game, but down in and down out have been very good defensively. Uh, in last week's game against Louisiana Tech, it was four one-play uh, touchdowns or four long touchdown runs, but the rest of it was less than three yards a carry. I've got to imagine for a coach, that has to be incredibly frustrating. It is, and that those are the things when you have to focus on every play, though, so that's, that's a 60-minute commitment in a football game, and it's just not happening right now for Northwestern State. There's there's errors being made both where on the defensive line and the linebackers, how they fit the plays, as well as the secondary covering up where they're supposed to be and making those tackles when they, when they get into that second and third level. Demons are going to run it. Gain of one, maybe two. You know, we talked about it in the break, uh, Patrick, about potentially bringing, you know, other players into the ball game. You know, younger players, freshmen that are trying, you want to evaluate further. And, you know, this this uh, situation where you can put a player in, 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 a, in a game for up to four games without burning a red shirt, essentially, I think it's a really cool rule and gets a lot of players a chance to develop and see if they're able to make a contribution with the, within the season. Quaterius Hawkins throwing the deep corner route. That one perfectly placed. Tuan Hines comes away with it. That, uh, I could argue, Gary, the best pass play of the ball game for NSU. Now that is the best pass play. You're right on. And good throw, good catch. And a positive play there and a big first down. Well, the other thing you mentioned, uh, as we were kind of talking about, hey, do you maybe see one of the youngsters at quarterback try to get them out there? One thing you mentioned is you need to see if Quaterius Hawkins can get into some kind of a rhythm because with the injury to Tyler Vanderwall, Hawkins is probably your starting quarterback. There's a chance of that. We don't know the depth situation on Northwestern State's quarterback roster, but uh, I would think that he would like to, Coach Laird would like to get a good evaluation here of Quaterius and you see if he has the ability to potentially lead this football team we talked to him today about about him a little bit and you know he is hot, he's got a lot of confidence in what he can do he says he can run the offense and we're seeing him throwing the football deep here that one just a little overshot was looking for zach patterson coverage on the play in the backfield by preston weeks yeah i don't mind taking the shots downfield that's what you have to do as a quarterback when you see a receiver with an opportunity to get an advantage on a receiver uh, excuse me a defender toss that ball out there and see what happens and that one didn't come down and with a with a positive result but you have to make those opportunities apologies that was not preston weeks he's the backup quarterback i don't believe he's out there in uh, in special teams so the demons will be looking at third and long go five receivers wonder if you might see quarterback draw here Instead, you see a quick pass to the outside. That's the tailback, Darius Boone. And Darius Boone Jr. will pick up some yardage. You know you're going for it on fourth down. When you see that play, that's a setup play. When, Nick, when, he throws, quarter. when he throws that ball out there, there's actually a receiver running down the field. They didn't cover him. So look to these coaches to come back to that play. We are through three quarters. It is all Stephen F. Austin here in Natchitoches as they lead Northwestern State 41 to nothing. Fourth down opportunity here for Northwestern State. Demons have attempted two of these and have not gotten either one. They'll throw the swing pass out to Scooter Adams, and that is complete. 
right in front of a very, you see number 11 there on the far side of your screen there at the far side. That is Jarvis Anderson. You see the lady in blue, that is Jenna Riddle. She is a sign language interpreter. And Jarvis Anderson, one of the more unique stories in all of college football, as Quaterius Hawkins will throw a touchdown. NSU finally gets on the board. He interrupts my story, Gary. I don't appreciate <laughs> yeah. that. But he does find Jaron Mitchell for the first score of the ball game for Northwestern State. We'll come back to Jarvis Anderson. But, Gary, good strong throw by Quaterius Hawkins. Yeah, this is what you'd like to see, a throw and a catch and get that ball into the end zone with Western State. You know, got to feel a little, little better about the situation here after this, this drive. They move the football on the ground, then they come up with a touchdown pass here to pay it off. We have not seen Brett Money yet, the junior transfer from New Mexico by way of New Mexico State. He has not had to do anything yet. He gave up the punting duties, and he is able to knock that one through. So Brett Money for the first time in this ball game as Northwestern State finally gets on the scoreboard here early in the fourth quarter of action. We'll tell you more about Jarvis Anderson coming up in just a bit. It is one of the most incredible stories that you will hear in all of college football. Northwestern State gets on the board for the first time, and the Lumberjacks still lead big. Well, there on the sideline, we were talking about him right before the touchdown, Jarvis Anderson. You see his interpreter in the blue shirt right in front of him. That is Jenna Riddle. Jarvis Anderson is both deaf and mute. He cannot hear and he cannot speak. And he is an, an insanely superb athlete. He has gold medals in the state of Texas in the triple jump, the 110-meter hurdles, and the 300-meter hurdles, almost breaking the record of Robert Griffin III in uh, the, tech, the state of Texas. He only had one offer in Division I football, and that was at Stephen F. Austin. And Colby Carthel said, look, the guy's got incre incredible speed. Uh, he's, he's fantastic. The only issue now has become how do you communicate? Yeah. And so that's what Jenna Riddle is there for in the blue shirt. She signs to him everything that is said. And when we talked to Colby Carthel before the game about that, and he talked about what an inspiration it is and how much of a, a team builder it is to have a kid like that on the squad. Well, more importantly, he, he's a tremendous athlete, he, and he's a sponge. He's looking to take in everything, and, and he's working on his craft. He, he, they feel like that he can be one of the top corners in the country you know, in, in a very short period of time because they see that he has the athleticism and really the game to, to, to play at a very, very high level. And the only thing holding him back is just that communication. And if coaches can work through those things with a player like him, with his skill set, that's going to be remarkable. They said uh, ordinarily now when he gets in at corner, and he is in at corner right now, they say when he gets in, just a fantastic play defensively there made by NSU's Cam Hardy. But they mentioned that when he's in defensively at corner, they tend to put him on the sideline closest to them so that if they need to change something or audible, they can get his attention in audible because he's next to their sideline. So just working through some of the things, but uh, as you mentioned, Colby Carthel very, very high on Jarvis Anderson. Believes he has a chance to be absolutely spectacular. And look, Gary, you don't, you don't win track and field golds in the state of Texas unless you've got the ability. Yeah, that's correct. You, you know, there's a lot of competition there, and he certainly has come away with uh, some accolades that are well-deserved and something that he can build on. And we actually saw him out there on defense. We'll likely see him again as the backups are in for Stephen F. Austin with a 41-7 lead. NSU gets a stop. This will be punt number three for Max Quick and the Lumberjacks. Quick coming in averaging 44 yards a punt. Tonight he is averaging 44 yards a punt. And fumbles it. Nearly blocked but got it away. Hogan Wasson telling everyone to get away from it. We'll take a Friendly SFA roll all the way down inside the 25 to the 24 yard line. So a 46 yard punt off of the bobbled snap by Max Quick. 
And we have a timeout on the field. Just two minutes into the fourth quarter of action. And SFA is up big on Northwestern State. Yeah, Stephen F. Austin's defense has done a great job here tonight, not allowing Northwestern State to really get any rhythm except for that last series that Northwestern State was out there. It's been slim and, and tough against this, this uh, SFA defense, and it is something that is interesting to see how that uh, continues to develop. And if they're going to win consistently this season, the defense is, is going to have to come around well. Big lead for Stephen F. Austin here early in the fourth quarter in Natchitoches. Two minutes into the fourth quarter, the Northwestern State down 41-7. Hawkins is going to dial it up, hit, try to hit Zach Patterson deep and overthrow it. Good arm strength, though, Gary, yes. from Quaterius Hawkins. 62 yards. I, I measured it up there pretty quick, pretty good. Toss that ball out there. Dang. I did good math. That was some fast math, my friend. I did. Quaterius Hawkins does have a touchdown pass in this ball game. Again, the real story of this game was early turnovers by Northwestern State. The other story of this game that you can't really see you is crickets. See it. You got it. You got to understand. There's crickets, crickets everywhere. It is a cricket infestation. I, I feel like is this was one of the plagues or something. It is amazing. <laughs> Locust? No nope, crickets. Another deep shot down the field. That one is intercepted. intercepted. Yes, it I is. I think it is. You're correct, Patrick. Right there on the sideline. What a heck, heck of an interception there. Just in trail technique on and the receiver. And by the way, guess who it is, Gary? 11? Jarvis Anderson. We were just talking about Anderson, his tremendous speed, his ability. Can't hear, can't speak, but can absolutely pick a pass off. Just a remarkable story in college football. Well, that, that's a galvanizing point there for a football team. There's no doubt about that. Every one of those players on that team are really loving the fact that that young man contributed in a big way with an interception to their football team. And, you know, that's just kind of the, the family aspect of that football team, and it just brings them closer together. Yeah, Colby Carthel was telling us that after all of their team meetings that he comes up and starts teaching his fellow players right. sign language. He said, you know, uh, I'm up there talking, and everyone's kind of slumped down. No one's really looking uh, ahead, and now we've got another big play that's dropped. He said, you know, everyone's kind of looking around. No one's really paying attention. He said, I call up Jarvis Anderson to give us a sign, less, a sign language lesson. He said, everyone starts perking up in their seats. And they, he goes, this is what paying attention actually looks like. <laughs> That's yeah. exactly right. Those were the exact words that he said. And uh, good, and for, good for that young man to have a big play in this ball game and an impact. And you see the result here with Stephen F. Austin on the field here offensively. And again, taking shots against this Northwestern State defense. With, and with, with Weeks at quarterback. And uh, Colby Carthel also mentioning with Jarvis Anderson that he's not only learned some, you know, rudimentary sign language. He said, I've also learned a lot about the things that he needs to know football wise. He said, I've learned enough sign language to know how to basically give him an audible, you know, tell him how what to do, maybe to do something else. So Yeah, but he can't say, Hi, how are you doing? Right. <laughs> he said he said, I can't tell him this is Natchitoches. Welcome to Natchitoches, he said, but I can certainly tell him how to make sure that he needs to audible right. to the correct play. Yeah, and back to the crickets. I'm, I've got about, I'm, I'm thinking on my side of the fence here, Patrick, I've probably got about 80 crickets around yeah, here. Yeah, there's, there's a few hundred here in the booth. Yeah, yeah we've got that. This is an open-air booth, and they, they, they're drawn to these lights, and, you know, it's just, yeah. you know, it's been an invasion of the crickets. If you are a, uh, a crappie fisherman, Gary, Ooh. you are you are salivating at the number of crickets that are in this booth right now. You just put those things on a pole and stick them right in the water. You're pulling out uh, crappie as fast as you can put them. Put them in the put the uh, the bait on the hook and put it in the water. Crappie are they hand sized crappie? They good? They're no, good? No, sure. Yeah, you gotta, okay. Gotta, yeah, depends yeah, on whose hand it is. <laughs> if it's your hand, it's great. If it's uh, Tyler Moody's hand, it's probably not such a good uh, a good fish to have. Moody's got tiny hands, you know. He doesn't really. I had to give him some grief though. Moody, a regular hand size? How's your how's your hand size, sir? What are you are you offended by that comment? Joe Burrow? Uh, Kenny Pickett? Uh, Moody's microphone's not on, so they don't they're not gonna let him answer. No no defense, right? No, well, so we can I, just keep talking. I think That's actually I think actually he couldn't turn the microphone on because of his tiny hands. <laughs> I think his hands were too small to operate the microphone. <laughs> Somebody oh. let Moody Moody talk, please. For yep. goodness sakes. This is what you do when it's 41-7 to 7 here in the fourth quarter, yeah. folks. Just, yes. in, just in case you're uh, you're wondering. Uh, 
my there hands, he is. listen, hey. listen, listen, Linda. My hands are perfectly normal size okay. for someone that's six foot two. All right. Okay. You have, but that was a good joke. I'll give you that one. Thank you. Thank uh, you. I'm glad you. Right. I'm glad you found someone else to turn your microphone on for you. Why, and Patrick? Ah, look. Got to do something to keep us entertained in this ball game. SFA continuing to throw oh, that one. Almost an IN. Should have been an interception. Yeah, these want these want pass interference there on the offense. But not no flags there. Hey, how many penalties do you think against Northwestern in this ball game? By the way, that was DJ Johnson on the coverage. There. Don't don't look at your stat sheet. Oh, don't look. Okay. Uh, there's not been many. Yeah. There's not been many either. This is this is something that's three. good for Northwestern State. Yeah. Only three three penalties yeah. against Northwestern State Coming in, in this game. Averaging over eight penalties a game for the Demons. Now SFA going for it on fourth down and four. Big rush and wide open on the short crosser. Now it's a foot race down the sideline and saving the touchdown. As Cam Hardy came up to make the stop, but wide open on the short crosser. Uh, that was LeVar Lindo. First down. Just no one went with him. And again, even now, and obviously you're starting to mix in some different guys defensively. Uh, you're seeing some different guys offensively, but the issue for Northwestern State all season long has been big play busts on that defense. Again, down in and down out, they've been fine, but they have been busting too many times. And that has led to a lot of big plays as SFA over 430 yards of offense in this game. Northwestern State does not have 200 yards of offense yet. Yeah, the defense is going to look back at this football game, Patrick, and you do not see, you know, where it's 100% assignment-oriented football. As you talked about, you see players coming wide open in certain areas, and the offensive system is just throwing the ball to open spots and open, rec open receivers, and they're, they're yielding these big plays. And you know, that's something that's got to get cleaned up. So SFA continues to move with Preston Weeks as he will hand off. Once again, that is Jalen Jenkins. A lot of backups in the ball game now for the Lumberjacks. The luxury of pulling their starters midway through the third quarter. Now for Northwestern State, some soul searching to do with a week off before they come back to Prather Coliseum and host Eastern Illinois. We will have that matchup. Quick throw to the outside. And that's good inside out per, uh, pursuit there that time. Jared Pedraza coming from his linebacker spot. First tackle attempt was made, missed and Pedraza does a good job swinging out there. So now fourth down for SFA. They will continue to go for it. This is that kind of weird area again. You know, kick it, go for it. What's running up the score? What's not? You know, I, I don't know what you do as, if you're Colby Carthel. I don't know how you play this cor correctly, so to speak. I think this is, this is the right call. This is an unbalanced formation here. So this is going to be a power football play to the right side, or he's got receivers to the right side that are open there. They will hand off right up the middle wow. on fourth and two. That was a physical uh, decleating there in the middle of the field. And that was right. A Looks like it's just short. Yeah. So NSU will get the turnover on downs. Just short of the line to gain, it would appear. And it is going to be Northwestern State football. On the turnover on downs. And as, as Tyler Moody can tell you, because he's known me for a while and has been... Uh, We've done radio shows together and whatnot. I am a big proponent of winning with class. And again, Gary, that's that's such a hard nebulous thing, right? Where is the where's the line on do you bring your backup kicker in to try to give him a chance at another field goal after he missed one? Do you go for it? Do you how do you know how do you go about trying to uh, figure that out if you're Colby Carthel? Because you're not trying, you know, you're trying to win with class here. We know Colby Carthel's a classy guy. Yeah, Colby Carthel has done a nice job here leading this football team, the decisions that they've made. In this situation to go for it, not go for it, those kinds of things. Just uh, you know, I think what we would expect from Coach Carthel, you know, and he's been, you know, he's been brought up in a football culture. He knows what what it means to to lead a program and lead it correctly. Take a look yes. at uh, upcoming schedules 
as we mentioned, Northwestern State is off next weekend. Then they'll be back here at home against Eastern Illinois. We'll have that game for you. That was a game that the Demons went up and had a uh, just an awful first half, turned around and played well and almost won that game in the second half. Going to give you a trivia question okay. here, Patrick. All right. Speaking of Eastern Illinois, All right. the top player in FCS college football is awarded the Walter Payton Award. Okay. What former player from Eastern Illinois? Well, the only one, one the only one, one the, I would, won the uh, the only one I think of is Tony Romo because he went to Eastern Illinois, but I don't know if he actually won it or not. He did. Okay, I, I knew he, I, he's <laughs> the only guy I know. Uh, uh, Sean Payton also, I believe, an Eastern Illinois quarterback as well. Um, but yeah, I, I, again, that's one of those where I know the most famous alum from Eastern Illinois, but that's no guarantee that he actually won the Walter Payton Award. But Terrius Hawkins under pressure, going to step up and run. He's very good with his feet. And he will scamper out of bounds, a couple of yards shy of a first down. Take a look at the upcoming schedule for Stephen F. Austin. The Lumberjacks, after this nice win against Northwestern State, back at home against Austin P. and AM Commerce, Colby Carthel's old team yeah. that he will face before starting UAC play. That's the United Athletic Conference. They start UAC play at Utah Tech and at Old Southland Foe, Central Arkansas. The uh, United Athletic Conference, a combination of the WAC and the Atlantic Sun. They came together, decided to make their conference. By the way, new punter in the ball game for Northwestern State. And an absolute rocket off of the boot. That is uh, the guy that has the best leg, uh, Kentrell Millette, the freshman from New Orleans out of De La Salle, son of LSU's Kendall Fa uh, Marlon Favorite. All Stephen F. Austin, but the biggest punt of the night belongs to the freshman, 42-yarder. And going to break, we mentioned the punt of Kentrell Millette, 6'4", 204, the freshman from New Orleans out of De La Salle. Got a good lineage. Marlon Favorite, the uh, father there, just a uh, someone that Brad Laird told us before the game, look, he, you may see him at some point. He's got the biggest leg on the team, and uh, you may see him again. Yeah, just getting in that rhythm and trying to find the way that you can get those extra yards, and just tonight only 26 yards on average for the, the previous punter, and that's just, that's just the nature of the game. Honstein had punted it away six times, and now we have an injury on the offensive line. And this is the one thing, Gary, that is the most unfortunate. Late in a game, no one is, you know, everyone's just trying to run the clock out, get to next week, and you have an injury on the offensive line. That is not good. Xavier Leonard the redshirt freshman from Arlington, Texas, backup right tackle, is who is currently down. And so you hate to see that late in a ball game where you're working in backups and guys that are you know, potentially, hey, you may need this guy somewhere down the, the rest of the season. So you really hate to see that kind of a, an issue late in a blowout like this. Yeah, well, hopefully he's going to be okay there not too not too much of an issue but uh, we just don't know looking at uh, the legs you wonder also could it potentially be cr a cramping issue it's still very humid out there it's a little cooler than it has been right, getting him up and off the field he's getting a little help there Colby Carthel you see there behind him walking out. So we were talking about Chief Caddo and both universities wanting to come up with a new rivalry trophy. Uh, saw a lot of floating of uh, a potential <laughs> Bigfoot. <laughs> oh yeah. You know, take a take a giant tree, much like you did with Chief Caddo. Uh, the, the, the story goes back in the 60s, NSU beat SFA. SFA had to supply a giant tree 
to Northwestern State, a, uh, a, a carver in Logansport, carved Chief Caddo, will do the same thing and instead make it Bigfoot. That's what That was Colby Carthel's idea, actually, is how about we play for the Bigfoot trophy? But you need to, again, make it the largest trophy in college football. You want you that. you got to keep that. Right, you got to keep that, that. Sure. You want to have that uh, particular piece of, of history. So the other issue, though, Gary, we were talking about is Chief Caddo is currently in Nacogdoches because in 2019, Stephen F. Austin defeated Northwestern State 32-20. That was the last matchup between these two teams before tonight. But then SFA took a penalty because of uh, academic issues. And with that, they forfeited that game. So does Chief Caddo actually belong in Natchitoches for his, his final spot, his final resting spot, if you will? Ooh, I was not aware of that last yeah. little detail. They had to forfeit the, uh, the matchup in 2019 due to an academic ineligibility issue. You need to, you need to borrow a pickup truck? I mean, I, <laughs> I, it's not going to fit in the back of my truck, I can assure you. you Tyler go. Moody's car is certainly not going to hold Chief Caddo. It barely holds me. Yeah, James Stanfield, our producer, has a big truck. He could potentially go get it. Either way, Chief Caddo is uh, no longer going to be played for. And it does bring up an interesting point. What would you have as a rivalry trophy between these two schools? You know, Natchitoches has meat pies, but Stephen F. Austin, Nacogdoches, not known for meat pies. What would you, what would you play for, Gary? Wow. Yeah, putting you on the spot with that one. I kind of like the Bigfoot idea. I mean, Bigfoot's big in it's East different. Texas. It's, it's different, and there's, there's some old legend and, uh, and myth there. Uh, it's all kind of what this uh, rivalry is about. It's yeah. some of those things. I know a lot of the Bigfoot hunters are, uh, are big East Texas folks. So maybe maybe you, you make, a, again, a giant tree and turn it into a Bigfoot. Call it uh, the Sabine Monster. I don't know, Battle of the Piney Woods. Who knows? I don't well, know. I mean, Battle of the Piney Woods already exists. Yeah. That's that's Stephen F. and Sam Houston. That's right. You don't want to you don't want to usurp don't them. In, don't want to infringe right. on that one. Battle of the uh, El Camino Real, right? The road that goes between. That is the tr that is the road. Yeah. So, could you play for an old? Could you play for an old El Camino? Ooh. And just drive it on a trailer back and forth between the schools because it is the El Camino Real. Got a flag down here on the near sideline, so. I haven't seen many of those. It's actually been a very low penalty game, just six total penalties called in this game. So we'll sort this out. It was thrown right at the line of scrimmage. I'm sorry, I wasn't aware there was a game going on. I was too busy brainstorming about <laughs> how we're going to solve potential. the trophy yeah. problem. Legal formation, kicking team, one and four in the backfield. Five-yard penalty will be assessed after the touch punt. Well, whatever it is, first down, Patrick, Northwestern State. Whatever it is, Patrick, that we come up with is is, is it's got to be the, the biggest. Field. Yes, the biggest, because that's mean, what it's been. No one else has placed for a car. So again, the El Camino. Might as well go ahead and just have an El Camino or a giant Bigfoot. Whatever it is, it's got to be unique between Stephen F. Austin and Northwestern State. Late action here in Natchitoches between Northwestern State and Stephen F. Austin as the Demons grinding for some yardage there offensively. All right, we were talking about replacements for Chief Cat. I want to get Tyler Moody in on this for a second. Uh, Moody, a man who won many, many trophies in his time as an athletic. Uh, he didn't have any Super Bowl rings, Gary, like you do. But, Moody, what would you come up with for, uh, for maybe a, a big – and unique trophy for this rivalry. Well, you put me on the spot, but I just came up with this in the last .2 seconds. Okay. Uh, did you see the aliens uh, that were <laughs> introduced in Mexico? <laughs> yes. That's what I would go with personally. Um, I mean, those right now, those are all the rage. So sure. I would think that is definitely the new trophy. A giant alien statue, perhaps? Yes. Yeah, that's what I'm going with. I feel like that's more a New Mexico thing, but... Uh, well, listen, that's what came to my mind. No, there, I, so. look, I, I did put you on the spot. You had no idea that question was coming, so... I do appreciate any answer that you gave. I don't know, that's that's tough. Because again, you do want something that has a unique characteristic. Which I like Bigfoot, again, East Texas, big Bigfoot hunting area. People in East Texas love some Bigfoot. I think Bigfoot makes a ton of sense. That would probably be a good one. 
Uh, maybe like a giant lumberjack with a demon head or something, you know, mm. kind of ties Go two with a things hybrid? together, get a little hybrid. I kind of like the idea of a 55 mile an hour sign because Highway 6 between Natchitoches and Nacogdoches is 55 most of the way. It drives me crazy. Also, my truck got hit by a, uh, a buzzard on the Toledo Bend Bridge one time going across uh, Toledo Bend. So I could, I mean, if you want to do a giant buzzard, I could get that as well. Yeah, my, my wife got pegged by deer yeah, going perfect. down that uh, road. There you go. What, how, about a a giant, how about a giant deer? Yeah. West, uh, West Louisiana, East uh, Texas, that's perfect. That's deer country. <laughs> it is. Let's just perfect. throw a giant deer up there. Call it the Toledo Buck. Ooh. Starting to like uh, Bigfoot. Yeah, I think the Bigfoot has some has some possibilities. Demons playing it out here. Scooter Adams on the carry. He had a really nice start to the second half. But really the difference in this game, SFA throttling NSU's offense and the turnover margin. Demons lost three fumbles, thrown three interceptions. They are minus five in turnover margin in this game and now moving backwards on second and short. What a clean game that Colby Carthel mm -hmm. has his team has played. It, he's got to be very pleased with how his team has come here and you know in this rivalry, which is has is a renewed rivalry, but uh, his team has played very, very well and they uh, they came came in here with with great effort and and it has showed that they have done a great job and they've put a game plan together that was working very well against Northwestern, especially against this Northwestern State defense. There were some explosive plays. We've seen them all night long that uh, really have plagued Northwestern, and obviously the, the turnovers are, were a big factor of that as well. That'll be the last play of the ball game as the clock hits zero. All Stephen F. Austin in this one as the Lumberjacks take down the Demons 41 to seven. Stay tuned in a couple of moments. Tyler Moody will catch up with head coach Colby Carthel and talk to him about a fantastic, fantastic effort by Stephen F. Austin. Gary, just a complete domination tonight. Yeah, it was a great night for Stephen F. Austin. The Lumberjacks came in here on the road and into it in, in a home, the first home game here for Northwestern State, and they just took it to them. It was everything that you would want if you're a Lumberjack fan. It went your way, and it certainly it certainly did here tonight, and the, and the execution for the offense was there. The defense did a great job of just uh, uh, suffocating Northwestern State early in this ball game. And a combination of that, that superlative play and the turnovers in this ball game really set uh, Stephen F. Austin up for, for a, a very unique win. Demons just get over 200 yards of offense on the final drive of the ball game as it's 208 yards of total offense for Northwestern State. Stephen F. Austin, 454 yards of total offense. Well, did Chief Cato make the trip? Well, that's what I'm, uh, let's go, let's get a shot of the south end, or the north end zone, excuse me. All of the SFA players are heading down and look at this, they have a giant wood, a big giant piece of wood, actually. And that is what they are raising. So no Chief Cato, but they do have a giant piece of wood that they are raising in the south end or north end zone excuse me this is typically what you would see in this scenario that would be chief caddo and they would haul him oh, over to the sideline and celebrate with chief caddo but with no chief caddo a giant pine tree log that's it and so tyler moody is down on the field set to go with Victoria's head coach Colby Carthel. Moody? Coach Carthel, first let's talk about what you guys are celebrating with over here. What is that, a, a giant piece of wood? Uh, maybe it's the start of a new tradition. We just uh, found that on the way over here. So <laughs> coach never returned my call. I wanted to play for something. These kids should be playing for something. So that's the largest traveling trophy in college football again. I think we cut it a little big, but weighs about a thousand pounds and we're going to take it home with us and celebrate. Well, you certainly deserve it. Your guys dominated from start to finish. Evaluate your effort in this game. You know, really pleased the way we started. Uh, really pleased with the turnovers. Uh, didn't play as clean the second half, you know, offensively and and uh, had some things that I won't cleaned up. We're, we're a young team and we're getting better and better each year or each week. And that's that's what I was excited to see, but still a lot, lot to clean up. 
my key to this game was your rushing attack, Wembley and Williams, against this NSU run defense, scored a touchdown, or got a huge run right out of the gates. Uh, talk about their effort. Yeah, that's, that goes back to our whole line. They do a great job, and, uh, you know, we've got good backs, and that's the strength of our team right now. We're going to lean on that run game. Helps us open up the passing game as we're breaking in a new quarterback. Well, congratulations on the win, Coach, and uh, here's to a new tradition. You bet. Axum Jacks. All right, Patrick, that's going to do it for us down here on the field. Thank you very much, Tyler Moody. We appreciate it. So uh, maybe, you know, somebody carved that thing at some point in time. <laughs> See if we can make, make it a Bigfoot. I like it. Yeah, it's going to have a little have that little pop and maybe add a little color to it. Maybe put something around him. I don't know. Maybe uh, maybe just something. I don't know. I, I love it, though. Colby Carthel, hey, just found a big log on the way across, uh, across the, the Sabine and brought it here to go ahead and, uh, and make a new tradition as uh, they bring a giant log. And really, they brought the whooping stick in this one, did the SFA Lumberjacks. For Tyler Moody down on the field, Gary Reasons next to me, I'm Patrick Netherton saying so long from Turpin Stadium in Natchitoches where your final score, a domination by Stephen F. Austin. They defeat Northwestern State 41-7 to in this one.